Or you can sit down if you want, whichever you're happier with. And click on the little button. Do you know how to do that? And so it's red. That should be it. Okay, so have you, Rob, have you had a chance to review these drawings, please? Yes. On the and, slide with close to consent. And did you... Are you okay with everything? So, what's is this the Arcadia one or the? Uh, uh, this one, I it's, I think it's Arcadia. Turn your mic on too, Derek. So, do you have any comments about this? Um, no, I was fine. Yeah, I was fine with it too. I thought that it, I was unclear as to what you were doing on the main house, which we do have the right to review, not the other, about the etched concrete and the matching color and all of that. So oh, it was not clear precisely what you were going to do, how you were going to do it. But that was my only comment. Like, can you help clarify that? I uh, yes, but on the drawings, is it? Do you believe it? On the drawings. And what sheet? What sheet, please, Brett? That would be. I believe it's a two point zero. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sheets in. Further, right, right. First one past the landscape drawing. If these are in order, there they are. There that. Up above. Yes. You look at that entire sheet. Yes. And there, the note. But the note to me was not clear. Which note are you referring? Upper to? right hand corner that talks about the colors. Okay. Yes. So currently, it's a kind of off beige color, and we're proposing to uh, change the plaster color to be more in sync with the proposed ADU and basement concrete, which is integrally colored to match Davis colors out back. And that's, it says to match concrete. It's a paint color though, right? No. No Davis integral concrete. Integrally colored. So you're going to put the Davis color into the, a new skim coat. That's not how exactly it works. We put the Davis color in the concrete because that's what it's made for. It's a concrete admixture. And then when we go to, when we hire the plaster for the house, he'll do mock-ups for us that closely approximate the color that we get. That's the only way we can- how, how, how saturated is the Davis color? Is it one pound, two pound? It's, it's, a, it's not your typical concrete gray. It's a warm gray. It's kind of a putty but, So you know how saturated the color is? It's, it's like- Like two bags. Two pound kind of mix. Yeah, it's okay. Pretty, it's a beautiful color. It's it okay. away from that cool concrete and turns it into a warm color. So yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm okay with it too based on that. So we will recommend approval. It would be great. No need for you today, Derek. Thank you for coming. It's always nice to see you. <laughs> I feel enriched. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, okay, so we're going to recommend approval, okay? And I apologize. I should have had that exact color. Okay. And I was just trying to match the concrete. So it's kind of a tricky color. You never know what John's going to do. We have a longer, C2 is going to take more time. So can we get on to that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Be good, guys. So item C2 is Zero Valley Road, and they are on for final. Okay, so as everybody knows, or many people know, I review the drawings the day before. I sent some comments, which I did receive the comments back from you. So let me show you, can you put that, let me show you what I'm concerned about with writing. Now, I know this is an extreme example, but that's what you guys have got on your property. You have an overhang with lights down below it. And I, I'm not the security light, but there is when they are, have it open, there's a window that just blows light out. I understand and agree with you that you're under 10,000 lumens per acre. I get that. Thank you for clarifying that. 
But you haven't, in my mind, taken care of the fact of the lighthouse effect or the lantern effect, where you're getting light from the house and it's flowing out from that. If you did a nighttime render of this house, just like your daytime render, it would, the daytime render takes all of that light and bounces it around and gets it inside the house. The nighttime render will take all of the light that you have at your ceiling, bounce it on the furniture and the floor and all that off the glass, and it will come out horizontally in a very bright way. Now, to the best of my knowledge, we've had two houses, it might have been three, that are basically glass houses. One down at the beach, just to the west of the building, and they put in vertical hor or horizontal wood flat shades to take that light down. The other one was just recently, it's up on Hot Springs Road, right at Riven Rock, where Riven Rock comes in. And what they did was they used a glass which cuts down on the quantity of light that is transmitted through it. So they get double benefit. It's decreasing the solar gain and it's decreasing the light by day. Now, I don't, I'm not trying to tell you how to design this, but I want to make sure that we don't get anything anywhere near that. So do you have comments? So, so let me just add what you said to me on that was that the reason was that you just didn't mention was that the house sat up so the grading of the site was a little bit they're about, about six so feet you're six 16 feet from grade south property line on your neighbor's side to the ceiling your house according to your drawing so i assume that's absolutely dead on so 16 feet plus or minus so that's more than 16 feet but you're it's still up and you're going to be looking, even with the lights recessed, I understand what you're doing. Thank you. Good job. But you haven't yet accounted for the fact of all the light on the inside blowing out. So do you have comments, please? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, and we're, Leela's prepared to address all of the comments one by one. So I read them and thank you. And I think you took care of it. I want to, um, you know, one of the, we always say to people that the MBAR is the best review. Uh, and tell us today. <laughs> because uh, of your thoughtfulness, you know, and you, particularly yours, Chair Watson, detailed review of the design, fair and reasonable requests, and, um, and uh, you know, very respectful and, and thoughtful dialogue. In this case, however, we were pretty frustrated to receive Conditions one day before the hearing. Not conditions, comments. Categories where we have already not just met but exceeded the ordinance. And uh, and we're being asked to go even further beyond the ordinance. Um, it's not part of the motion. It wasn't part of the discussion with the board. And it doesn't leave us adequate time to address them, review the changes with our client, and see if our client is okay with us being proposing design solutions that are above and beyond the ordinance. We study exterior lighting. We're, we're happy to design to any standard and fully, fully uh, able and willing. And I think we share the same values at keeping um, Montecito, Montecito, keeping it dark, almost black night skies. All of that, all of that we're, we're totally on board with. And in fact, we think we have done that. And Leela will, will tell you why. Um, but that needs to be in the ordinance, not fed to us one day before. So, um, or at least well in advance, enough time in advance that we can discuss it with the design team and present solutions so that we're not in a situation where we're here presenting, believing we've fully addressed all of the issues and get kicked to another hearing and another hearing because, because more specific and new things pop up, pop up late. Um, so... I'll, I'll tell you that our project is nothing like that. That's a two-story project. It appears to have very bright lights directed out at the street. I, I don't think that's a relevant um, image to show in relation to our project. 
our project is a very subtle one story project. The majority of glazing is screened with screens that appear on the elevations. The entirety of the property is screened by landscaping. Our client's uh, design standard they ask us to design to is 100% privacy. They don't want people from the street to see one single window. Um, okay, so Dan, can we go to that? I did not understand the screening. It does not show up on any of your renderings. I saw that there was a detail, but quite frankly, what was shown was not clear to me. Can we go and look at that? That may be the thing. Can you give us a sheet number, please? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to turn it over to Leela and she she can go through it and um and uh show you everything that we've done. So, um Leela, wherever you want to you want to start and maybe just start by Yeah, if we pull up Yes, we have uh, wood architectural screens in front of um, the linear south glazing, both in the eight, in the main house, and that's where they live. In the west glazing, the east glazing. The east and west glazing does not have architectural screens. We have modified, worked with Ground Studio. I read in the Dark Sky Society that they do not, they don't have comments on interior lighting. So it was all exterior, which is exterior sconces, exterior lighting around the building and structure, um, exterior lighting around landscape pathways, sidewalks, and driveways. I think that after our, I showed you our calculations, Ground Studio's exterior lighting is very minimal. It's at 6,650 lumens. And then we have modified, since we saw you last, our recess lighting. We've cut down our recess lighting from 1,200 lumens to 500 lumens. And we are well under times 24. Our allotment, according to the Dark Sky Society, is 20,000 lumens, and we're at 18,000. So we're under that. I understand all that. Okay. The issue is not the Dark Sky compliance, at least for me. Okay. The issue is what's called the lantern effect, which is all of the exterior lighting, but more importantly, what that will that house glow like a lighthouse yes. out in the water. So I feel that Please, I feel that we have really gone above and beyond and tried to prove to you and the board um, how sensitive we are with our lighting approach. We have done photometrics that are not required. That photometric study shows that outside around 10 to 15 feet outside the building footprint of the overhang, it gets to zero foot candles. That is we don't have another way to prove that to you other than truly a photometric study. Comparing our book candles to then the renderings, I don't think, think is a fair comparison. I also read in the Dark Sky Society that things like screening with tall hedges, planting large trees, big shrubs to help diffuse that light and break it apart. We are doing all of that. And then if you look at our exterior elevations, which we can point you to, we have really dense wood screens in front of the glass as well. So we have multiple barriers. Can I, can I add to that? The, I know exactly what you're talking about with the lantern effect. I've looked at this on tons of projects, especially projects like in places like Hollister Ranch, where we've done a lot of work and you can see houses from a long distance. The lantern effect, quote unquote, happens when reflected light can be viewed from a long distance. Light doesn't reflect off glass. So if you have an all-glass house um, and lights are shining downward, there's no reflected light that's being projected outward. What you see from a distance is when the light hits surfaces that you can see, walls and ceilings. So when the ceiling is illuminated and you can see it from a distance, it glows really bright. Our project, the ceiling isn't illuminated at all. We have no up lights. We have only down lights. We have very few... Um, walls that are going to be visible from a long distance. And all of our walls are a natural material, wood. Any wall that's visible from through glazing is a wood wall. So it doesn't have, and the ceiling is wood, so it doesn't have the bright surfaces like white drywall or plaster that are reflecting a lot of light. Um, not to mention, you just can't see any of those surfaces from any neighboring or public vantage point because of our landscape screening and other can you look at the perimeter landscape? Yeah, the wall is gorgeous. Well, that's on the south side, but it's not on the east. So you have two 
rows of Loris nobilis on the south side. I don't know how high they're going to get, but you know, I'm sure that there's some up there. The east side looked to me that you're locked in at six feet, and the rendering that you gave showing planting up to that was below. Well, I, I could, I could clarify that. Yes, please. Um, yeah, the um, the east side. I think that you're talking about, which is the street side. Yes. Those plants are actually supposed to be about eight to ten feet tall on the inside of the fence. If you go to sheet, um, I think it's L five point zero three. I don't know. Keep going. Actually, oh, so uh, keep going. Uh, oh, yeah. Keep going down. There's one image I wanted to share with you. Uh, oh, got it. This isn't the slip sheet. I see. Okay. Yeah, if you actually, you can keep growing up, actually. Um, there's one other image I can share with you. Uh, f I think it's 5.03. This sheet here, this one. This one, yeah. Scroll up if you could. Yeah, this is what the street is going to look like. And then this is the inside. So we're re like the intention is we're really densing the inside with oaks, but the Loris nobilis will easily get to eight feet tall. And we're planning on planting 24 inch box, which are day one, at least six feet tall. So, you know, we are in the process of lighting and stuff of trying to create some guidelines for the board. So we're working on that. I do still have something to hang my hat on. But I think this, I think you, know, you folks do nice work and it would be good to their faith that Hello, hello, hello. Did you get, okay. How's that? There we go. Okay. Um, I think this is one case, this is a case where we, I think it's a very nice project and um, I think we can have a little faith and then we'll have something to at least kind of as a standard to look at, know that for somehow if it ends up being too much light, then you have something to point to. But I, I, I have confidence that they've thought through this thing on a lot of levels and that, and that um, the cumulative effect of everything they're talking about will work. When you just refer back to the ordinance, that's called ministerial. Design approval is discretionary, and it does not necessarily it is not necessarily to the That's what and Montecito wants to make sure that it, any lack of this and that is taken care of, and lighting is sort of suggested, but nothing more. So I'm not trying to impose anything on these two projects that we have that are basically all grand sizes. I mean, I'm just trying to protect the community. So that's just my I think landscaping is probably the solution to this. I'm not trying to change the architecture. I told you from the very first time you were here, I thought this was a remarkably beautiful. I just want to make sure that this beautiful house does not negatively affect it. So I don't know if this landscaping is going to do it. Uh, it's got to be a little bit on faith, but which I'd prefer not to do. But I think that it's, I think the reality is in a house like this, it has to be landscaping. So if, you know, I, not worked with Rob for very long, but in that very short period of time, I gained a remarkable respect for his opinion, his knowledge, and all that. So, with that recommendation, if he thinks it's going to be okay, I'm going to think it's okay. So, and the reason I send stuff out before is not a requirement, but issues that I think are unsolved, I can stop it on this project and then we will go through all of this today so we could answer it right now in the short list. So that's why I do what I do. I'm not trying to torpedo you. I'm trying to help you get through the process and make sure it's done completely. Okay. 
So you're ready to recommend approval to the full board? Yes. Any further comment? Okay, so we this will be done officially at the full board and then terminate the contract. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, we have a full board now. Dave will not be with us. <laughs> so are we ready to start the full meeting? Only if you want. Only if you want. Thank you. I'd like to call the March 4, uh, April 4th, 2024, Montecito Board of Architectural to review. Montecito Board of Architectural Review to order. First item is public comment for items not on the agenda. Is there anybody that would like to address the board, please? Uh, I don't have any hands raised. And uh, for those of us joining um, online via telephone, if at any point you'd like to speak or when your item comes up that you'd like to speak on, uh, it's star nine to raise your hand. Public comment for Please fill out a slip when you get when you get done. When you get done, what? Okay, very good. Agenda status report, Dave. David, uh, we do have one change to today's agenda. Um, staff is requesting that item number six be dropped. Uh, so this is uh, due to the item was on appeal. The Montecito Planning Commission's decision March 20th was on appeal and the project was appealed on Monday. Uh, so um, it's up to the board before it comes back to the VAR. So uh, staff is asking that that be dropped. This is the Skyberg project on Periwinkle. I move to uh, drop item number six until um, some future date. Is there a second, please? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anything else, David? Minutes of the 21st, please. Anybody? Okay, on item number C1, comment number three, the applicant will provide a detailed photographic record. And then I think we should add of the landscaping to planning and development upon completion of the project, which clearly demonstrates, I think the word demonstrate should be uh, replaced with the word documents. It's documents the as built condition. And that is all I have. Is there anybody else? I'll move to approve the minutes as amended. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any further comments? All those in favor? All those opposed? Members informational briefing. Did anybody go anywhere, do anything? Okay, I actually had a 40 minute phone call with the architectural lighting consultant that did the San Carlos Ranch, Rob Ruffin. Um, reached out to Eva and she reached out to this company HLB and they were so kind as to spend 40 with 40 minutes with me. And basically what they did was they reviewed some issues, but more importantly, they pointed to four separate ordinances, I think three in Colorado and one in California, something like that. And suggested that I take a look at that, which I have done. I am in the process of consolidating that so that it'll be, you don't have to go through all of it, but, um, and then I'll bring it to the board soon. So anybody else please for informational briefings? Staff update, please. Nothing for me. Nothing for me other than the report on what happened with the planning commission decision on. So are we up to consent uh, Consent items? We had two today. One, Brett en en Entinger's project at H69 mm -hmm. Buena Vista Avenue. 
basically the project is an ADU, which of course we don't review. And then they were changing the plaster from being sort of a soft Spanish plaster to being um, harder edge, strip off the bull nose and put on square joints and changing the color. We looked at that and the, of that and there was some landscaping too, but we had no comments on that. And I would like to recommend approval for uh, as submitted. Rob, do you have? A... Nothing, I have nothing to add. You to want to second, second that? Second it, yes, please. Any further discussion, please? For the record, there's no public comment on this. Ah, public comment. Anybody like to address the board on item C1869 Buena Vista Avenue, please? Thank you, David. Okay. So now, is there anybody, uh, all those in favor? Aye, all those opposed. Item C2 was um, Dan and Leela's from Anacapa Studio, the house on Zero Valley Road. And I have been concerned about the lantern effect on that project from day one. And we went back and forth about it. They've reduced the lighting down. They have some screens on the exterior walls. Uh, glass walls similar to the project, similar to the project down at the um, Channel Drive that we looked at maybe two years ago. And um, according to Rob, sufficient landscaping to provide a screening to take the light from a two-acre site, project in the middle of a two-acre site, and to keep it off the road really so with that, um, I would like to move for final approval as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? And just before I go, Dave Mendro has a family um, family issues to deal with today, so he will not be joining us. Okay, item one. Highway 101. Mr. Chair, can I just say something really quick before we get started? And that includes for our applicant team. So just be careful when you're talking in the mic and you're talking to each other, see how it goes in and out. So just be mindful of that because I think we're losing some of the, the comments. And we do have a planner memo on this item. Oh. Okay, well, let's read that first. I didn't see that. Yeah, let's read it first. Um, the proposed amendment to the approved 101 widening segment 4D requests approval for design changes in the Three Creek Bridge location, Romero, San Ysidro, and Oak Creeks. The proposed changes include raising the freeway elevation changing barriers from concrete walls to guardrails and maintaining the existing creek channel in place under the bridge instead of using a bulkhead. These changes are being proposed to better meet flood control standards for development within the special flood hazard area, including that the project results in a no rise in the base flood elevation during a 100-year flood. These changes also require modifications to the planting plan, 56 trees and 25 arbutus and uh, 31 cirrus are proposed to be removed from the planting plan. The revised project will still meet the required restoration ratio for oak trees, specimen trees, and native trees. Okay, so the floor is your, we have one public comment that I know of, maybe more. Okay. And anybody that would like to comment, please fill out a slip. Yes, please go ahead. All right, thank you, Chair Watson. Good afternoon, and members of MBAR. Uh, my name is uh, Fred Luna. I'm with the Santa Barbara County Association of Governments, and we're representing uh, here, um, the Highway 101 team on the Highway 101 Montecito project. Um, and so that's the project that Caltrans is the applicant, SBKG's the primary sponsor, and then we have a number of consultants 
and they will introduce themselves as they uh, participate in the presentation. Um, as was indicated in the staff report, we're here um, before MBAR um, related to a, a, uh, an amendment to um, the permit that was received for Highway 101 Montecito. We went through a number of meetings, if you, some of you recall, um, a couple years ago to get this project through approval, ultimately through the Montecito Planning Commission and the County Planning Commission. So we're here to present at a concept level some recommendations uh, based on that change. Um, uh, we're open to other suggestions as well, but we, we have prepared exhibits and you've seen the, um, both in the staff report and in the presentation that will be coming, um, uh, what those recommendations are. Um, as it was articulated in the staff report, um, those primarily relate around um, addressing um, the mandated no rise policy, which is uh, county flood control implementing through the FEMA regulations. So we went through that exercise specifically related to sound walls as we were finalizing the design for the rest of the project and looking at the other project components and based on new requirements from FEMA to analyze it using a new, mo a new way of modeling for this particular watershed. Um, some other issues about flood diversion were um, came, came that we had to address. Obviously the objective with no rises, we're, try we're trying to avoid water being diverted into other sh watersheds, keeping it within the, fl the floodplain uh, as it currently exists. And so those changes, um, as was indicated in the staff report, um, were related to changing the profile on the highway, um, which ended up resulting in making some modifications to uh, the concrete barriers to an open barrier system, and then um, the change to some of the landscape materials. So our design and landscape team will walk through those changes. Um, we, I think it's important to know that um, we evaluated a number of options before we've come before this committee. Um, last summer, when the new um, requirements were made uh, to the project team um, by FEMA in evaluating what was needed to make sure that the project didn't have a rise condition in that base flood elevation, like I mentioned before, we looked at a number of solutions um, require, looking at culverts, um, expansion of the bridges that cross uh, the freeway and um, our design team will explain that a bit further today. So I think what we're presenting to, do, to you, um, uh, we'd like to say has been at least tested by our design team. Obviously um, the outcome um, and how we would propose to you know, mitigate what the changes are is, uh, is subject to discussion and we, we would appreciate any input um, going forward. We do have recommendations as to um, what we would what we implement from the approved design choices that went through the process um, with MBAR previously. So we've we've pulled uh, elements. So the open barrier style is something that was already approved and used elsewhere in the um, in the project, uh, and uh, also the same for um, the plant material that was is being recommended. It's also from the approved plant palette. So at this point, um, I'd like to um, hand it over to Zach Zaviglia, our design manager, and Christine Anderson, and they'll walk through um, the presentation. And um, I think we would go to slide three where we would start. There you go. Thanks, Fred. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, glad to be back. It's good to see everyone again. I know it's been a little bit since we were in front of this board. Um, what we wanted to start off with, like Fred mentioned, is just an overview of what is driving the need for these changes. So what this slide is showing is just the complexities that exist along this corridor as it relates to the floodplains. You know, as been seen multiple times over the last several years and even most recently, just, just several days ago, this is a very complex and active floodplain system. And so we're building this freeway project through this floodplain system. As Fred mentioned, the condition from FEMA is that the project cannot affect any existing base flood elevations, either upstream or downstream of the freeway. So there were a lot of uh, constraints put on the on the team here. We worked through, I would say, dozens and dozens of different alternatives to see if we could meet the conditions without affecting, um, you know, some of the the proposed landscaping and aesthetic features. And ultimately, as we'll get to in the presentation, we, we settled on an alternative 
it did require some changes. So what's shown here are just the floodplain um, lines from FEMA. So those are shown in light blue. The dark blue lines are those defined flood ways. And then the county recovery mapping is that overarching yellow color that you can see that just spans um, you know, the freeway and the adjacent areas. Next slide. So as we continue just north along the corridor, same thing, we're just highlighting the difference between the floodways, the floodplains, and the recovery mapping that just spans both sides of the freeway, north and south. Next slide. What we wanted to highlight uh, to the board is that while we did have to ultimately make some changes to the project and to the profile, it is a, very, a fairly defined limited area along the, the corridor. So we worked very hard to try to minimize any of the design changes that were needed. And ultimately it comes down to these areas shown in green. So along the northbound side of the freeway adjacent to North Jameson, roughly around 1600 feet of the barrier that was previously shown as a concrete barrier needed to be adjusted to a metal beam guardrail. And then along the southbound side adjacent to uh, the Union Pacific Railroad, that is approximately 600 feet of concrete barrier that needed to be adjusted to metal beam guardrail. And really is the requirement is that it has to maintain the existing base flood elevations north and south of the freeway. And so these changes were modeled with our hydraulics team, uh, reviewed by Caltrans and ultimately uh, submitted for review um, with the county. And when I mentioned that we evaluated multiple alternatives, like Fred mentioned, we looked at expanding the bridges. We looked at constructing new culverts across the freeway. We looked at adjusting the cross slope elevations and we got down to nuances of every, every 50 feet looking at potential changes to the profile and the cross slope ultimately to meet the condition that was placed on the project for no rise. And it's resulting in these changes where what's shown in green previously had concrete barriers and um, to meet the no rise condition, it needs to be a metal beam guardrail system. And coupled with that, there are some additional profile changes on the freeway mainline itself. Next slide, please. So this is just a, a clean version of the slide. There was a lot on that last slide. What we wanted to highlight on this slide are just the um, planting areas as they would um, exist uh, with the project. So just defining those types of conditions that we have. So along northbound and southbound, we do have fairly narrow planting areas. So six feet or less. Um, along most of this segment. And then there is an area adjacent to the San Ysidro Creek Bridge that does provide some additional area for planting uh, outside of the main line. Next slide. And again, just a highlight of what is changed with the project. It's just that last slide had a lot on it. So we thought it'd be good just to show a clean version of that to really highlight where the uh, scope is being adjusted and again, it is a fairly limited window along the project. Next slide. So just to highlight the changes in a cross section. So what you can see on the left, this is the, the original design that was presented to this board um, last time we, we came before you. And it shows the concrete barrier along the northbound side. And then in that space uh, where we had the uh, separation between the main line and North Jameson, there were uh, plantings that were identified in there. The changes that are being um, made are shown on the right side of the screen where you see the concrete barrier previously shown as that hatch gray area. You see the profile of the main line is adjusted up and in order to accommodate the flows, we had to um, eliminate the concrete barrier and put in a metal beam guardrail. And then in terms of changes in the planting, um, there are different design standards that apply to metal beam guardrail from a safety standpoint that do that do not apply to concrete barriers, mainly because uh, if a vehicle were to accidentally leave the road and they, they were to strike the metal beam guardrail, that guardrail is gonna move back up to four feet. So from a safety standpoint, there are limitations that apply to guardrails that don't apply to gar uh, concrete barriers. And Christine can touch on the changes to the landscape pellet. 
Yes, hello, thanks again for inviting us here. Um, so I'm Christine Anderson, I'm the landscape architect for the project. And um, as Zach mentioned, uh, you know, the raised barrier as we, as we originally had it, as it was originally proposed in this area, uh, would have allowed for a, a planter that was uh, six feet or wider. And we had, uh, we had identified planting a small multi-trunked tree in planters six feet and wider for this area. But because of what uh, Zach just mentioned, the, the raising of the road profile and the change to the metal beam guardrail actually um, impacted the plantable area um, for us, as well as just what um, Zach mentioned about the uh, um, the movement of the guardrail up to four feet that allows a safety standard that we have to complete to actually provide some sort of uh, other types of plant material in this area. So we've identified a small to medium shrub um, it, to replace the small tree uh, that we had originally identified for this area. So you can see the original design on the left-hand side and the proposed revisions on the right-hand side with how that impacts our, our plantable space in this, in this area. Um, you can go to the next slide. So this is the northbound. This, yeah, this is the northbound condition. Um, so I wanna make sure that you understand, I, I believe uh, Zach mentioned, this is about 1600 linear feet that are affected in this area. Um, so it is a really uh, important uh, part of the key, the, this piece to, um, to the 4D area that we're working with. If you could go to the next slide. So this is the southbound area. And I'm, yes, real quick. Can we go back one, just one slide? Thank you very much. Um, so I just wanted to just clarify that, you know, as, as I mentioned, when there is that additional setback requirement because of the guardrail, so it's shown as that separation behind the, the guardrail. So in between the main line, which is shown on the left side of that, that right cross section, if a vehicle were to hit that barrier, it's gonna move to the right on the screen towards the fence. And so that's why there is that area that's um, no longer available for planting. Whereas if it was a concrete barrier, it doesn't move if a vehicle hits it. So I just wanted to just clarify, that's why there's that space in between guardrail and where the planting is now proposed. And Thanks. next slide. Uh, yeah, next slide. Uh, in the southbound area, um, as J Zach mentioned, it's a little over 600 feet. It is impacted with the change from the barrier to the guardrail, but it really only impacts our planting design for about 200 of those 600 feet, um, where we had a, a, a retaining concrete barrier on the original design, as you can see on the left, and then on the right, because of the road profile change, we now have this sloped condition back away from the, from the um, uh, roadway that only allows the smaller uh, plantable areas as we just discussed. Um, and so again, we are proposing like a small to medium shrub. We're recommending to use something like a petite oleander. Um, it's consistent with other, other uh, uh, shrubs that we've used on the, on the um, on the rest of the on the rest of the project, um, and it's also consistent with the plant palette that has already been approved by um, by this body. Uh, it has other properties as well as um, that it's drought tolerant and hardy in these kinds of conditions, and so it makes for a for a good um, for a good transition here. And um, this this completes the presentation. I just wanted to follow up and just say that all of the other elements of the project that were previously re reviewed by the board are still intact. They're, they're still part of the project. Um, again, we worked um, to minimize the changes to the degree that we possibly could. And ultimately it came down to these areas where uh, ultimately had to look at changing the profile and then switching the barriers along the northbound and southbound alignments. So the next slide is just our closing slide. And with that, we'll open it up and turn it back over to the board for any questions or clarifications. Rob, I know you haven't reviewed the project before, but I think it's on the whole landscape. Could I start with you? Um, what, what are, um, do we have a graphic at all that um, um, shows what was there 
from your original design to what you're proposing now um, is, is one of my questions. And then, um, and then I'm trying to understand. So if the guardrail moves back four feet, you were proposing small trees. What what is the um, what is the issue in terms of the trees? And when something moves back, what is what is the downside? What is the um, safety aspect of that that prompting that? It's maybe I'll start with um, the safety related question, and then Christine, I'll let you touch on the changes in the in the landscaping. But the issue is, is all of these guardrail systems, they are nationally tested and they're, they're given a certification to meet these parameters. And that certification is based on the fact that there is nothing behind that barrier that would preclude the movement of it. So all of these uh, traffic control systems, they are tested. They're tested and uh, certified by federal highways, which then comes to Caltrans for implementation. And the state does not have the ability to put any object behind there that would impede the movement of that barrier. And so if a tree is back there, the chances of the barrier moving if a vehicle hits it, then also poses a, a potential safety risk with debris falling onto the main line or further impacting a vehicle. Whereas if a concrete barrier is there, it's not going to move, a vehicle's gonna hit that and then be redirected back into the shoulder or the main line. Um, so within, so you mentioned four feet, the planters six feet, there's not ability to stick trees then is, is four feet, the critical distance. And if it is, is, can, I mean, could you not put trees, um, you know, on that last two feet? Um, I'll let you go first. Right. So for, uh, we do have various maintenance guidelines as well that we have to abide by with, uh, you know, uh, trees and, and shrubs and various other things like overhanging the roadway and overhanging other items on the, on the road. So, you know, theoretically we could plant a tree within two feet, but it's not an ideal condition. Um, and it does prevent, like, as uh, Zach mentioned, a safety problem if any sort of things might drop into the roadway in those conditions. So that's where we're, we're mainly concerned with any sort of, uh, limbs that might drop or leaves that drop into the roadway. Okay. Uh, Chip, please. No questions. Uh, Bill, please. So you're removing trees and then you're replacing them with maybe the oleander, is that? So in terms of lushness and green and screening and that kind of thing, it, you feel like it's gonna be a, a fairly like for like kind of a thing or? At this point, it's about the best we can do. I mean, we've looked at various alternatives. We've tried to, you know, identify larger as as large of a shrub as we could possibly get. We're looking at a, a shrub that's like three to four feet um, around and tall, if we can. Um, we we have some limited. If you could bring back up the um, the uh, cross section, that might help. The I think it was on. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, if you could go back one slide, it's probably a little more representative. Um, so, you know, admittedly, it's not as, as lush as what we had before, um, for certain. But we do know that the, that the shrub that we're proposing or that we're recommending for the, the oleander is, um, you know, very hardy in this condition. Um, and, you know, it's proven, it's a proven item. We have it in lots of other areas through the corridor, and we're also using it in some other areas as we get closer to San Ysidro. So it's actually, um, you know, it's a proven item, but it doesn't, you know, I will admit it doesn't have the same look as the original design. Um, and I think, I don't know if we need to follow up, but uh, I think the previous speaker also asked a question about what it does to the plan. And we do have some plans in here too, that we can look at if you if you want to, if the change that was made as well. Um, I was interested in seeing the and plan view, you know, yeah. how the trees kind of were proposed and what you're proposing now, just kind of the right. sense of how that laid out. If you could scroll, I believe there's some additional slides after the question slide. Um, uh, keep scrolling down, I think. Uh, so. Here you go. So um, 
So this is the original uh, concept plan. If you could go one more sheet, it probably is a little more illustrative of the, of the issue. So you can see the yellow highlighted area are areas that we had to uh, eliminate or, or revise the tree to an oleander in this location. Um, and uh, if you could go to the next slide. So this is still the original concept plan. And then if you could go to the, uh, maybe skip over the next slide, go, there you go. Uh, so this is where the, the condition is, the, the revised plan. So we will still have the vine along the fence and we're showing the, the shrub all along the front of that, uh, that fence location between those areas. So that's really the impact of the, of the planting change. And just to, just to help, um, and these particular plans are, are flipped from the previous view. So in this case, North Jameson is actually along the bottom of the slide, whereas before the slides were oriented with North Arrow being up. And so North Jameson was along the top of the slide. So I just wanted to clarify that. Bill, um, thank you. Uh, also, also wanted to ask the uh, a barrier rail that we all know, and we've seen those a million times. They're usually a shiny silver chrome or double galvanized uh, can that be a color? Is there a reason why that couldn't be a brown or a green or a cam camo or whatever to kind of let it screen away? Yeah, absolutely. The, the intent would be that we would use the same Natina stain that has uh, been used elsewhere along the corridor. If you drive along either northbound or southbound just through the Summerland area, you'll see uh, where that stain has been applied to the guardrails in those sections. So it would have that same look and it would not be galvanized. It's, it's more of a patinaed look. Robert, question. I'm uh, just going back to recent history here. Um, is this going to prevent the flooding that happened like several days ago? And I mean, what is the inches per hour you're basing all this engineering on? What's your analysis or explanation for why that happened after what we've been through and is the metal guardrail actually a safer condition than the concrete wall which would bounce a car back in um so i'll, I'll start off with the the um design standards that we use for this project. So Caltrans has a requirement for all new facilities to be able to drain a 25 year storm within the storm drain system. So all of the new storm drain that's gonna be constructed and installed in this segment is designed to accommodate a 25 year storm within the system itself. In this uh, case, um, during peak storm, so still during a hundred year event, if we go back to the slides that show the floodplain overlaid on top of the project. And slide two or three, or I'm sorry, three or four, right there is a good one to start with. So you'll see that the floodplain still span over the freeway. So in peak 100 year storms, there is not enough capacity in um, the creeks crossing the freeway to have that contained within the system at this time. All of the bridges are being designed to accommodate future improvements at a later date. Once improvements are made to the system upstream and downstream, the bridges are wide enough to accommodate a hundred year storm. But what's being constructed with the project is in order to meet a no rise condition. So the existing Creek walls that are underneath the bridge will remain in place. The bridges are longer. They're being constructed longer so that once those improvements are made upstream and downstream, those walls can be removed. And so that that's part of a much longer term plan. Um, but we did coordinate with uh, FEMA and County Flood Control on sizing these bridges to accommodate the future storms. Why, why didn't that lower section drain last, what was it, Friday or Saturday? I was going to, I was Fred Luna again. Um, I was going to address that um, uh, as the second part of your question. So um, 
there's a couple reasons um, why that that, that condition. So Zach mentioned the, the the drainage is designed for the 20 25 year storm event, but there's also we're currently in construction right now, and so there's a there's factors. Some of the drains got clogged as their temporary drainage that's in place right now, and the drainage in the in the median, which is going to be a substantial improvement, is currently being constructed right now. So it was one of those unfortunate things where not all the drainage systems were in in the ultimate capacity that are going to be a much better improvement with the project when it's fully built. Um, and um, so, and then during construction, we also have to be mindful of stormwater. And so a lot of the inlets are, are protected. And so they don't have their full capacity as well. And so uh, a number of factors that went in, Caltrans forces went in and, um, and cleared those inlets. And it, after about a day, you know, we saw a, an improvement in, the, in those uh, capacity, those storm drains were um, working, working much better, but still. Um, we're in the process, we're in construction, so that's part of the reason. Uh, lastly, is is there like a 3D model rendering of what you had before and what you have now? Um, so these particular locations where the changes are, we, we did not create models for these areas before, and that's why we... Um, wanted to present the changes in a cross section to help illustrate um, what was changed from the before and after condition. When we came before the board, um, we had numerous um, renderings that were developed, but none of them were in this particular area. So that's why we created the additional cross section to help I illustrate. I remember those. That's why I was wondering if, you know, this being the gateway to Montecito and Santa Barbara, the appearances you know, something we're trying to figure out. I know Rob spoke to that, but anyway, no more questions. Okay, so it appears that you're raising the level of the, of the roadway, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And it also appears that at some point it was legal to have a barrier that would be solid in place and would not displace if it was here. And is that still currently legal to do that? From a traffic safety standpoint, a concrete barrier is still um, legal to, to place along freeways. So isn't the real issue not that you need the four foot backup space because that's predicated on the statement of this particular solution requires, it's called a standard rail, requires four feet to move back. But isn't it possible to design a barrier that is porous, you know, big openings with small vertical line that would be so strong that it would meet all of the requirements of the existing wall and therefore would not require that extra four feet. Isn't that technically possible to do that? I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about engineering, please. Yeah. Um, so to address the profile change, the profile changes are what drove the rest of the, um, the changes to the barrier. And it's because in the previous design, flow was moving between Romero Creek, Oak Creek, towards San Ysidro Creek, which was causing the uh, water surface elevation impacts that we saw at San Ysidro Creek. So we had to raise the profile uh, between Romero Creek and San Ysidro Creek, as well as between Oak Creek and San Ysidro Creek. And what that did then was when that profile moved up, the concrete barrier posed a, an impediment from water. Previously, the design allowed for floodwaters during peak storm events to flow over the top of the barrier and flow across the freeway. When the profile is raised, it no longer allowed that with a concrete type barrier. And that's why we had to change to the metal beam guardrail system because as it goes up, water can now pass through that barrier. So can I, can I ask a, a follow-up on that, uh, Chair Watson? Is, is what you're asking is that, is there a rigid, a more rigid type of concrete barrier that could be installed 
permeable, open. That, but it has openings um, that there's are there are types in the corridor um, like we use at Santa Claus Lane. But is that the question? That doesn't have the deflection. And therefore allows us to retain the landscaping, yes. And I'm not talking about money. I understand that you're going to come back and say, oh, it's too expensive, but we'll deal with that in a second. Actually, um, you 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 gave me an idea that you're on, you're onto something. And is it possible that you could have combinations of the both of those barriers where we could kind of carve out some key areas where the landscaping would be much more beneficial and, and noticeable um, so that if you kind of had the concrete barriers where we could have the trees in some key spots, is it possible to have, um, you know, a combination that would be effective? And again, I'm sure it's more expensive, but uh, where well, we could... I think it's going to be less expensive than a solid concrete full length, poured in place, you know, et cetera, which is what you had. So anyway, you still haven't answered my question. Is it from a technical engineering point of view being using any material commonly available today, is it possible to design a barrier that would have sufficient openings, small verticals, large span that would resist the car hitting it without deflecting four feet, please. Yes, so um, there are barriers that are approved that do have openings like you see along the, the bridges in the corridor um, that provide additional uh, openings versus a solid barrier. We cannot use a barrier system that is not federally tested and approved. So I will say that there are options for us to look at with the restriction that we cannot just design a special barrier. It has to be a nationally tested and approved uh, traffic control system. Okay, my last question is, if you've got this variable barrier, are you permitted to put a strut behind it? At, okay. at the point, at the top of the column? No, and again, it, it the system has to be installed as it was tested during crash testing, we're not we're not permitted to make any changes to that system. Okay, public comment. Uh, we do have one member of the public, Claire Gottstanker, who, as many people know, uh, used to serve on this board, and she served for years as a representative to this committee. So, if she needs a minute or so more than the three minutes, I'm going to grant her that. But oh, everybody from Caltrans. <laughs> Clear, concise, and complete, please. Yeah, well, the, I'm, I'm only here for one reason, and one reason only, and it has to do with the landscape. Um, and uh, staff was has been um, really great in showing me what what you're proposing and what we're having, and and I've got all the drawings here. And um, and my issue is the the changes that your your um, the proposal that you've given doesn't include trees, okay? And Montecito is all about trees, all about trees. As you know, because you've been here, you've been around me, you've known that, that, uh, that I'm in that world. And although it should be, for the public should know that I actually have worked with Caltrans for the last 14, 13 years on this project. You know, I was part of their their design team. And um, so when I got all this information, I really, uh, you know, taking the trees off the plan is absolutely a no-no for me. And that's why I'm here. You know, I want the board to understand that from the, the public, from Montecito, from Montecito Association, for all the people who live in Montecito, they love their trees. To take the trees off the plan at this point is really stupid, as far as I'm concerned. So that's why I'm here. I just wanted to, you know, because I I had all this information, and then I saw that there was a change in what we're trying to do here. But the tree can trees can go in there in that same place. You know, there's plenty of room. 
You know, and then when I look at the thing, we've got four feet. We can plant trees. We can plant small trees, raggier than oleanders, which are poisonous anyway, and shouldn't be used, in my opinion, shouldn't be in a public project anyway. Um, but that's why I'm here, because I, I'm opposed to taking the plant, the trees off the plant. I think Montecito wants more trees, and it's certainly this particular stretch right here you know i mean th there's there's trees across the across the away you know but you've taken the trees off the, this plan you know and yet right across the way across the freeway there's plant there's a plan for tree 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 you know so that's my comments to the board and to you guys and the public you know is i think i think we need to put the trees back into the plant. Can you turn off the mic? Okay. Thank you, Claire. Okay, anybody else like to address the board, please? Okay, so let's go back through comments. We'll go in the same order. Rob, please. Um, You're on for some kind of concept today, right? Okay, so I, I was on uh, Historic Landmarks Commission when this project first came through in the 90s and um and part of that was we some people on the board and you know a study we drove up and down the freeway and um through montecito and there was this nice collection of huge skyline monsters cypress trees oaks sycamores and slowly but surely um, we lost some real key ones uh in terms of widening the freeway for that so um so i think losing the trees and 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 the richness of having some composition of trees is is a huge deal. Um, so what I was alluding to, and you didn't answer that question. I'm not sure if it can be done, but it seems to me that and I and I appreciate you know the safety and and some of the maintenance stuff. Although the maintenance stuff in this case, I think could take second seat to it. But it seems to me that you could carve out and and kind of repropose this where you kind of carve out there's some key intersections and stuff where we really need to have that richness and cluster of having some trees so perhaps that you use the um the concrete you know barriers in some cases and then mix in the metal you know the the, the metal portion of that where you have the safety part, part so that you could kind of accomplish having having trees and then having you know the safety aspect of that and having water to be able to move forward i mean through that so seems that you could you could do that creatively and could be very effective and successful. Yep, comments please. Yeah, since I'm not really qualified to uh, help or address any questions regarding um, the floodplain or uh, the safety, I'm just going to focus on mainly the landscaping. That's what we are, I think, one of the reasons we are here. And, and I know that you're raising the freeway in a couple of locations. And as I, we all know, when you raise the freeway, you increase the noise. Uh, so because of that, uh, I would like to, if you can, as mentioned by um, Rob, find ways to um, landscape it, um, soften it up, and find ways to find materials that meet your requirement, but helping with the sound. I know you have to do what you have to do, but that won't be an aspect. I think you can look at that and make it better for for the community. Thank you. Bill, please, comments. Dave, could you go to that section, the cross section that we were looking at? Can you hear me? Hello. Um, uh, go to the other one, the first one. Yeah, there we go. Um, I, you know, I appreciate Claire's comments too, because I think that uh, I think we're all sort of hedging that direction. And I'm wondering, and and I know you guys, you know best. You know, we're hands are tied, obviously, based on flood, and you got to get water to go through these things. So, is there a way to maybe maybe it's the chain link fence position where? the trees uh maybe the chain link fence comes forward closer to the barrier and you can get a tree on the other side between the road and i you know again i don't know i'm just spitballing ideas 
but I, I think I think we need to try and get some of that lushness. I mean, <laughs> clearly, just in your drawing here, the original design has a lot more uh, charm and 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 comfort and landscaping than the uh, proposed, and so. Um, if there's a way to do that, and I don't know, you know, you know, you guys know the engineering, you know the flood stuff, so there's a lot of things you're dealing with, and I appreciate you trying to do your best, but maybe there's a way to float that fence and get planting, and maybe it's some planting on one side, some on the other, I don't know. So some way to get greenery along that corridor, I think, is going to be important. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Comments? Yeah, I, I also lament that, that the trees are so greatly reduced that we're just going to see a chain link fence and a metal guardrail. And I'm, I'm just not convinced, like John, that you couldn't do. I mean, I see a bunch of gravel under this original design and the new design i mean you know could the wall be on caissons and grade beams and somehow be permeable i'm i'm not sure i'm not an engineer but i i, I don't understand why the water just couldn't flow right over the top if you did it right either but again i'm not an engineer so I would love to see, you guys are pretty good at it because I've seen your work before, uh, some sort of a, a rendering, you know, video of what this is all going to look like because it is such an important stretch. And everybody that drives up from L.A., you know when you hit that hill, and you look down that you're coming into a lush, beautiful place. And I'm just not sure that this new design works. Uh, those are my comments. I think it's a dog and a tail problem. I think you guys have put simplicity of engineering first and then let the tail, the landscaping, be second. I would like to ask you to make the landscaping the dog and the engineering the tail. If you can build the city court building, if you can build the bridges that are, you know, around the world that Calatrava builds, you can do this. Okay. Somehow there's some kind of a guardrail, permeable something that you guys can scrap together that's got federal approval. And, you know, I thought Rob's idea was interesting, too. Maybe part of it is the old design and part of it's the new design. And you're very careful about how you do that. There is a way. So please, landscaping first, engineering second. Okay? Anything else? And what, what are you guys going to do? Come back next week or, or two weeks? Or is this something like three months out? Or what's going on, please? have to uh, um, work with the uh, county staff on when, our, when we would next come back. But as, as we mentioned at the beginning, this is concept. Um, we certainly are hearing that. We'll um, look at those options and the, and, and the comments, and we can prepare a, uh, a model for the areas that are affected. Since this was fairly quick turnaround, we, we prepared a cross-section sketch, kind of described the issue that we're facing, and, and we wanted to get feedback. So we're at that point. We'll come back with uh, and address comments. And it would be helpful if um, I think if you had a plan view, more of a concept plan view that that, you know, perhaps shows where, as I suggested, maybe that you could have pockets and trees and and then other pockets where you allow the water to come through and the safety part kind of rules. But um, I think you can do it and do it well. Yeah, there's a way. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen right, and thank ladies. You. Thank you, Claire. Okay, item number 2541 Hodges. Ken, are you here, please? And you press the little button, the horizontal buttons. There you go. So, 541 Hodges, this is the first time we've seen it. 
Hi, my name is Mark Winky. I'm pinch hitting for Ken Dixon today. And it's our landscape architect who we did not include the plans, I believe, at this point uh, yet, but we can answer some questions potentially if there's any landscape questions at this, at this conceptual meeting. Uh, this is a house in the, uh, you all know this area probably pretty well. It's behind all the commercial area. It's behind Peace Valley. Yeah. You could probably explain it better than me. Um, and at the end of the street, do you want me to tell you like to go to the next page and stuff? Yeah. So that's what it looks like from the front if you zoomed in, but we're gonna see that again another time. Um, the next page, these are all the pictures and adjacent pictures, but the upper left one kind of describes it the best. You can see the commercial section to the back. There's a huge number of big trees back there. You've probably seen them from both sides. There's the house, it's sort of L-shaped. Yeah, thanks. Uh, pools existing, the house is existing. Uh, what they're hoping to do and propose is to not use the, take the garage that's there, as you can, you can kind of tell where the garage would be, take that off, take the carport to the left of it off and or turn the garage into two bedrooms and take the carport off and put a, a new garage there with a unit, a bedroom above, I think it's like a guest room. Um, the the rest of it basically stays the same. The pool's the same. The whole area in the back, it's re-landscaped. The interior of the house and a lot of the exterior gets uh, small additions and complete renovation into a really different Spanish-style house. The existing one is kind of a stucco with a uh, slate roof or asphalt roof. Don't know the name of that style. Um, but... And that's it. So we can go probably to the next page, unless you want to see the existing house. They're also on those pictures. So there you go. That's maybe better, yeah. The areas are shown are the purplish pink area. No, purple is lavender area on the left. That's the new garage area with the unit above. The reddish area to the right of that is the stairway that gets you access, like an ante room that you then can come into from the exterior or the garage. And you can go upstairs to that bedroom. Then you turn right where the peach area, flesh colored one is, and we'll see plans of this. That's the actual existing garage that we're adding two bedrooms to and a bath, two baths. We don't really review floor plans. Keep going then. <laughs> or roof plans necessarily. That's pretty much the really only addition. There's a little bit in the front, which we'll get to. There you can see the plan. The round thing at the bottom that is a part of the landscape then goes into a new entry hall entryway and that'll show up on the elevations too the right hand side is a few steps higher it's like a half a level higher uh, keep going next page deck in the back um, improvements to the pool area so that we now have adjacency to the living room family room area which is you can see it on the upper right there and then the on the top of that area where there's some stairs separated by that separate the living area, outdoor living on the left, right and left, the one part's dining. Um, that's also new. Uh, off the master bedroom, there's a little pergola. We're sitting outside. And uh, next slide. That's your roof plan. Next. That's sort of the existing, that is the existing conditions drawing and what it looks like. And these are the new plans, new proposed project. Uh, stucco, play tile, two piece, Andelman fixtures, downcasting, uh, some stone, new stone work. You can really start to see the difference in height. So what happens is with this part of the property, the left-hand side is considerably lower than the actual property, to the right where the main house level is. So it's like a half maybe three quarters level down. Uh, and there's a unit above, step to back from both sides. What else to tell you? The middle drawings on the right, that is the living room, family room area I was saying that's off the pool. So now that's being opened up with French doors, for that indoor outdoor relationship. The bottom left drawing is the area where I explained there are some exterior eating areas with stairs between them that take you down to the backyard. And the right-hand side is the garage. 
And with the unit above. Next slide. Uh, you could be interested in this. That's the sections. We'll, if you are, we can go back later. Next slide. Just keep, next slide. Next slide. Details. Next slide. Details. Next slide. Details. Next slide. Next slide. So these are sort of, if, unfortunately, I'd like to put renderings one on each page, but we have five on a page here, so you're going to have to zoom into each one of them. The first one at the very bottom is probably the one that explains how nice it is from as far as an aesthetic view. That's what you would see when you came into the gate to the house and then walked into the so right. At this point, the gate's not there. The trees in front of the house aren't there. That's the dark color is the driveway or the uh, street, I should say. Uh, anyways, without those there, that's what you'd see. Go ahead and scroll up a little bit. The new entry on the to the right, that's very diminutive, a small little entry. They, that's the kind of style they like, small and diminutive um, Andalusian style. The left stores an aerial view. That's from the back. Kind of shows you the pool, the, 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 um, the master bedroom area. You can probably scroll up a little more. And then these two aerials show, help you kind of show the massing of it um, if you were a bird. That's it. F A R. Is it on the is there a planner? No. Eighty-eight. It was zero when you guys started. No, no, eighty-eight. Yeah, yeah, that's the next one. Okay, are you done for now? That's it. Okay, so questions, Bill, please. Did you, did you uh, work out how you're going to back out of there? Do you, you think you can back out? And we did. So turns. it's it's sort of it sort of uh, works that if you pull in if you pull in the garage, you you back out and start heading your tail of your car towards the left, our left. You can overhang that rounded part with the back end of the car and then make a turn. And that's why the other part of the road bumps out like, bumps out like that. So that was sort of the starting point. Hopefully you're not texting and you're paying attention and you can do it all in one stop, one turn. I didn't mention right below that curved area in front of the garage, they're just gonna turn that into a little morning court. It gets the morning light. And uh, three spaces, don't you? Uh, no, Kimberly, two spaces or three because of the remodel? I have to run the numbers to see if it's over 50%. Um, are, you adding, that, are, you, are you adding over 50%? It's, not, it's just that addition on the top. So and it's, the and the garages. Yeah, that's how it is. Okay, so the answer, thank you, Kimberly. So the answer is you need to show square footage existing and square footage no new and then you have to show the percentage and it has to be below 50 percent or you need another parking space yeah i think it's on there but okay hopefully our i didn't see it but i didn't look for it either hopefully Bill. did that uh, what's the plate height for the second floor right here and well in your of uh, the garage. above the garage oh. it's probably in that one of those sections uh, my, my recollection from when i worked on it a year and a half ago, is it's like eight feet. For the garage, you want to see eight two. Is that I think can you zoom in upper left. Yeah, upper left. And then I don't know if your site plan shows the neighbor. Does it show the neighbor building? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Too. Okay. Uh, and could you go to the site plan real quick just to see if the. I was just curious how that second story impacts the neighborhood. Is it. Uh, Good point. The neighbor on the left is a really cool modern house. It's behind its own fed fence and gate. 
In fact, the hedge between the two, I think, you can't even see the houses. Um, I mean, low there. And, there. and that area is lower in the back. The lower. neighbor is higher. Neighbor is higher. David, I think there's a, some Focus. Google Maps on the first page. And then the one on the right. Maybe second. Yeah, right, right there. Upper left. As you can tell from both of those, I think they both have driveways on their adjacent property lines. What would you say the difference in elevation between the neighbor on the left and yours is? I think the neighbor on the left is similar to the existing house on the right, uh, the, our proposed project. The garage in that left-hand triangle corner is the lowland, sort of all slopes down towards the trees. So from their garage where their car, their truck is sitting, to your lower yeah. Got to be at least four or five feet. Four or five feet. And their their garage and that car there is basically flush, maybe a little lower than the street. Okay. Questions, Robert. So this this is a remodel with a second story, correct? And it's going to be Andalusian and style. Um. What what's the wall thicknesses? As far as the new work, I believe all the new work is two by sixes. Um, and what's the old? The existing ones, the existing walls, I believe, are two by sixes. Or when they're being removed, they're being replaced with two by sixes. And uh, the roof going to be a two-piece tile right. girl okay yeah. no more questions uh questions tip can you um go to uh the elevation please Okay, uh, I can't. Can you tell me what is the uh, the uh, the uh, dimension string on the uh, lower elevation on the right hand side? I can't read that. Me neither. Right, Pam. Eight and eight. It's nine. Twenty-six feet. Twenty-six feet. And the one right to the middle is it twenty-seven to the left? Twenty-seven. Twenty-two seven. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Questions, Rob? Do we go to the um, uh, site plan, please? I'm trying to connect the um, the elevations with the site plan in terms of how they kind of go together. Is there some steps or something that goes up to the front door um, yeah. that that are not showing on? Am I not seeing those? Or I think they're right after the circle. Okay. Um, and then what what is the I guess thinking of um, you have the circular element in there and then there's the front door um uh, what what is the i guess what is the thinking of kind of the hardscape layout and and the strategy i guess there i don't know i'll take a shot at it and maybe so. add some stuff they have a door so you don't have to drive up you can walk up actually come in the gate there and then you come to the come in and come into the circle area the circular area is sort of a node between people who might come in and park their car right there in the driveway as a visitor and then also walk through there and then they can also go from at any point from the front yard on the right back to the driveway area so it's sort of this little celebrated roundabout um at, at that point and i believe that's it they don't they had no plans at the time for a little fountain or anything yet but that was discussed and then this then you go from that area straight into the house yeah. so so is the um, 
I'm a little confused by the graphics on there. So is the, um, there were the trees showing right there, it's gray. Is that supposed to be all landscaped area? That, I mean, it, it reads as paving right exactly. now because it's gray. That's correct. Okay, and then is that patio there, that's five-sided flagstone look, that's that's elevated as well? That's, that's actually it. at flush grade with garage, I believe. Yeah. So on the, against the old garage area, the one that's... Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe go to, I'm sorry, maybe go to the elevation again, too, because I'm seeing, I'm seeing something that's there you go. connecting sure. in my mind, so... Yeah, it's sunken because the we had to raise the the front yard a bit to get the driveway to work to come down and into the new garage. And that's sort of how it explains on the... So which one of those sketches is the... So the front, the top is the front? Or yeah, the top, yeah, that's the front. Okay. Oh, it's I kind of buried in there. Yeah, that, that's that's the problem we have. So you're actually going down at back down again. And... Yeah, so we had to create a little retaining wall to create this little patio because they wanted to have a little morning garden off the front. And then the front, and then that little circular area is off to the right over there. With the... Yeah, see the thing that looks like a really thick slab in the middle? It's right before that. Yes. Oh, oh, oh okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Site plan, please. It looks like the, is north up on this? No, it looks like the south east corner of that driveway isn't really all on your property <laughs> is there a, some kind of an easement there that's not showing up you see that corner right there yeah right that's there. exactly yeah it's all existing conditions so are kind of that weird there yeah okay well can you please not today but show that you have the right to do that with some kind of easement language or something. I'll ask them, yeah. Okay, that's an, that's not the first question. Is that living room height existing now? Please. Yes. Um, public comment, is there anybody that would like to address the board on item number two, 541 Hodges Lane, please? Okay, so... Um, this is on first time. My question is about story poles on that. It's a two-story element, which we haven't had. So if people could address that as we go on. Bill, you're first up. Yeah. So uh, let's go to the elevations real quick. Uh, you know, I think generally uh, the, uh, let's see, north is to the side. Then the north side of the house with the tall story and a half addition. I don't have any problem with any of the work there. I'm having a little conflict with the shapes of the roofs and the misalignment of things and the bay not being kind of centered on the garage. I mean, these aren't super critical items, but they just sort of a, um, feels like there may be a better way to make that roof work. That maybe the gable even turns the other direction. It's sort of fighting with the little shed there. I don't know. It, there's something about that second story that just sort of doesn't feel quite uh, worked out yet, I guess, maybe for lack. Uh, the rest of the project I don't have a problem with. Um, in terms of story poles, uh, that's a tricky one. I may defer to what other people are thinking. I, I could go either way. It's a small part of the house. It is the lowest part of the lot, so that part probably not such a, a big of a deal. It is the garage side of the neighbors, so maybe it's not too important. Uh, but let's see what other people feel. Uh, if no neighbors have made any comments about it, then maybe it's not as critical. Anyway, those are my comments. Thank you. Robert, please comment. I appreciate the way you're trying to stay kind of with the Montecito feel. There's certain elements that I think are, like Bill said, maybe need a little work. Like in the middle of this slide right here, I find it 
not an illusion to have those three doors with the last one on the right going all the way to the corner. Um, that's existing though, right? That's room is existing. The last the, door the, treatment is new. You know, I mean, to to my mind, you need more wall, and you would never have uh, a corner that height push that close. There's just odds and ends, but I think in general it's a nice design and maybe in your detailing as you go forward you can provide us with hopefully a, God, I'd love to see at least two by eight walls and, you know, just the eave details you know, maybe do the striped plaster on the on the rakes. I mean, just kind of tune it up. I think you're you're heading in a good direction. I like the materials. I like the color. Light fixtures, of course, have to be, you know, the dark sky thing. But you're heading in in a good direction. I think. One thing I forgot to mention is those windows above the doors there, that's from that room is the view of the mountains. Sorry about that. The proximity yeah. left and right, not yeah. up and down. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's a corner window because the other side has a window in it. Comments, tip, please. Um, so we'll do story poll. I would want story poll. Okay, I'd like to wait until story pulls up. Thank you. Rob? Uh, yeah, Rob, please. Um, can, we, can we go back to the uh, plan view for a second, please? Hold on a second. Do we straw vote on the story polls, or just two out of the five is enough? Is that? We'll see. Okay. Boy, Tip, I want to hear his opinion. Um, you know, I... I, I I know you, Mark, and I know some of these, um, some of you architects have great hand graphics. And so what I'm seeing, so the plan view, so the elevations are nice. And, and I know you're trying to put forth this Andalusian quality. And I, I don't see that in the site plan and the plan view part of it. Um, I find the, um, the entry, there's, it's kind of busy. It needs a little bit more. It doesn't have that kind of Andalusian feel to it. It's, it's, Maybe it's the graphics. I think that, you know, kind of a hand drawn concept or that, or something, or using a computer to, to put forth that would be very helpful. Because there's kind of a, um, so the simplicity is kind of missing for me. And there's, there's, I find the entry is kind of confusing. There's, there's a lack of hierarchy to it is that, that you've got this kind of circular element and it's calling attention to off to the backyard when I think you want to maybe put forth front door and have that as the dominant so, so I'm, I'm, I'm struggling I guess with maybe some of the graphics I think would help you know help present that but I find the plan view um, is not putting forth that kind of Andalusian flavor that you folks are after and that the architecture is starting to do so I guess I would I'd encourage that I very much want story poles, particularly considering that the house is basically now a single story house. And even though it's technically a single story living room, it's all. Oh. Oh. So, and I don't know the neighborhood. That's why we do site visits and why we have story poles. It wouldn't surprise me if you're blocking some mountain views. So I don't know. That's why we go out there. Okay. And that's why putting them up, the neighbors will get really clearly seen, oh, it is okay or it's not okay. So, And then in terms of this, you know, there's kind of these very formal, grand, state, classical, Mediterranean, and then there's kind of the George Washington Smith. I know that he was more Mexican, but sort of casual farmhouse, funky, you know, things kind of get put in wherever they do. I love both of them. 
but I'm not so sure you've got figured out which is which here. And I would encourage you to either formalize it or create some kind of more interesting details. And in terms of that window, the clear stories, when you sit down and figure out the head and then the transom and then the sill, those are usually about that big. And if that's the view, you're blowing it. So a much taller door. I went to Europe way too long ago, stayed in this place in Italy, and it had very tall doors, and they were dramatic, and they were hard. You know, so you may want to think about that. And then you don't have the problem with, with the grids lining up and all that kind of good stuff. So is everybody okay with a site visit here? Yeah, okay. You're not on. I think just as a, a rule, anything two story needs to be story full. Yeah, and so the living room, because it's new, that height, and then over, I'm, is it a bedroom up over the garage? Whatever's up over the garage. The bedroom, yeah. Yeah, so. Bedroom, garage is all new. I think we just put them up like this. I think it's not going to get higher than that. So we had some more, I wouldn't call them aggressive, but more different flavorings for the left part, but we wanted to make it seem more like it was smaller on top. So we pulled it back off the the base and put a kind of quirky bay window there. It's off the front, which is off center. But so there's a, for us, there was a lot of these kind of quirky and delusion built over time. This is what grandpa's house was. Then this is my dad's house, you know, and they've all sort of added on to give it that feeling. It doesn't look like it was all built at one time. So that's sort of the dream we're going with. But that's a hand formed corner and it's old funky tile you know, yeah. and not pristine metal windows or clad windows. I mean, if you want to play that game, I love it, but it's a very uh, demanding exercise. So over the ridge, um, over the garage, and over the ridge on the living room, anywhere else that people feel it needs to be? Okay. So if the living room is the same height, that the ridge hasn't got any bigger, but now it's a gable instead of a hip. Good to go. It's only one story, that part of it. The, on the main living area, you just do the ridge. That's... Well, the ridge is already existing. Oh, of that that tall? The living room, yeah. Oh. See, I think it before oh, it was a hip. It. Now it's a gable. So they were going to add on out sections. The I think that's how it goes. See how it's a hip there? Yeah. We'll do it. I guess the point put is do whatever's up. higher. Yeah, put them match up. the heights that are on our plans. You know, the if you have a hip, sometimes people had a hip so that people can get just that view across the end of the hip. Yeah. So okay. Anything else? Anybody? Thank you. Okay. So work with your planner on figuring out a time and Okay. Come on back. No major. Ch yeah. Are you we, you're coming back with a landscape plan? Yeah, we already have it done, but we didn't put it in the set. I think the comments about the driveway and burnt yeah. around are well taken. So maybe you could buff that up a little. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I Mr. Remember Mr. Chair, uh, coming back for further conceptual. Or we could come back for preliminary. We certainly don't have to grant it. Yeah, let's try to come back for preliminary, you know. Okay, and you may or may not get it, right? Very good. Item number three, Richard, are you here? 1386 East Valley Road, please. Uh, the, your, that mic is not on. That's
that mic is not on. There you go. Or you can stand up if you want, Richard. There is a memo on, uh, no, I'm sorry, that's the next project. Speak into the mic, please. We're broadcasting over to France and China and South Africa. Chairman. Speak into the mic, Richard, please. Yes. See how close I am? Speak into the mic, please. Oh, for my drawings. Yes, that's they're supposed to be up on the screen. Okay, very good. Thank you. Into the mic, please. That's the beginning sheet. There you go. It's a concept elevation and the, you know, the, the statistical data, all that kind of thing. If you scroll to the left or the right, yeah, show more of the right side. See where the site is. The road to the right is Picacha Lane. East Ellie Road is on the bottom of the site. I don't think we're getting map. And, From him. Uh, Across the street. Do that, please. Hit it with your finger. Across the street is um, Casa de Herrero. So it gives you an idea where we're located. Next page, please. Existing site. Again, East Valley on the right right hand side, the circular drive coming in, the front door of the squares in the middle of the site leading up to the rectangle house and the two car garage to the rear on the bottom of the page and the long driveway along the western side. North is to the left. Backyard is to the uh, left and there's a big walnut tree in the backyard in the upper left hand corner of the map with that little patio out there. Next page, please. Slightly sloping site to the right downhill. Just about maybe 4%, 5%. This is the conceptual improvement of the site. Same in uh, front door driveway with the cars uh, inside coming on the left-hand side and exiting on the right-hand side. Arrival point enhancement at the front door. Just leaving all that existing the same. The client wants to put a small pool in the front yard there, which is his south side of his property, and then a privacy wall and a sound wall directly along the street on the East Valley Road, which we'll see later on in the drawings. Uh, the gates are located 30 feet from the edge of the pavement, and widths are about the same. I'm, it's existing 15 foot on the entry drive. I'm going to make it 16 feet. And then at the base of the house to the upper part of the drawing there is new terraces on either side of the entry to the stream there. A couple of fountains thrown in here and there. A walkway around on the east side stepping down into the east yard for outdoor uh, activity areas. To the rear of the house going up the page is adjacent terraces from the dining area. And then the fountain area that you see there in the middle circle going to the backyard is Landscape improvement package. The westerly driveway going to the north and the existing garage stay the same. We um, go ahead and page next page, please. The existing and, and proposed floor plans 
existing being on the left. Kind of an interesting house. The front half, the south half of it, is um, split level. In other words, you walk into the entry level, there's the dining, uh, living room to the right. You step down half a flight or a third of a flight to the driveway level. To the left there, you see the vacant rectangle. And uh, then behind that, you step up a half level, which is again at the entry level to the kitchen on the left-hand side rear house. And going across to the right is the uh, full living room from the south side to the north side. And then there's a little, I guess you'd call it a vestibule beyond that the back patio behind the house and a back patio and a laundry room behind the kitchen. What we are proposing, keep in mind this house was built almost 100 years ago, which plumbing was hardly invented then, and closets were hardly even thought of, but other than a Sunday jacket to go to church in and get buried in. So that was about it. So the client would like to modernize the house to the extent of making it functional to provide for reasonable amenities of living in a house of this nature in this area. Hence, we're adding a little bit to the front of the living room, a little bit to the rear of the living room, which is a new dining area. And then going upstairs above the living room is the master bedroom, again, adding a little bit to the south. To the north, we add walk through closets, and then a master bath of two, just two sinks, a toilet compartment, and a shower and a tub. So it's not a major addition. To the left of that, on the north side of the second story, is an addition to the children's bedroom, the one main bedroom to the left of the door. Going to the south again, there's a new library room, and then above that, on the split level, Another room, we will add a new bathroom suite, and that becomes uh, a secondary retreat up there. None of these rooms accentuate the view to the south, which is the Grand Island views, or to the east, which is down the coast all the way to um, Carpinteria, Rincon Point. So the new addition tries to uh, take advantage of those shortcomings that were previously built in this house originally back in 1930. And uh, we're just, in doing so, with the maneuvering of the numbers and the square footages in the house, we are only adding 600 square feet to this house. Next slide, please. Again, the existing elevations on the left on the right, and you can see the south elevation at the top. It has little tiny windows looking to the ocean, and no windows in the, in the upper left there. That in that room on top there, there's no windows in this house. So obviously, on the right hand side, we have uh, accentuated those additions by bringing the master living and the master bedroom out to the south. I've done it with a gable addition. As they are volume ceilings in there, and um, I want to accentuate the celebrate the height and the light coming in from the south. As it is right now, the house is very dark. I've also reorganized the entry to the point of doing a higher door entry and raising that balcony up so it's more accessible to the master bedroom level, so he can come out there and throw boiling oil. own balcony above the entry door. To the left, you see the terrace on the bottom ground floor, giving some privacy to that lower bedroom. Uh, opening up the middle bedroom to the, the uh, library to the south with just a French balcony type of arrangement. And then the top bedroom up there just kind of uh, giving a old, pardon the expression, stealing from Casa de Herrero, the little uh, stone column window arch the owner like. On the right hand side is the living room with a terrace uh, setting up 
the living room sitting on an expanded terrace area. That's just a bench wall. That's not a privacy wall. And then you walk through that little arch you see on the right-hand side, that door, which is just a thick, thin wall, which you see on the drawing below that, maybe two to three feet thick, to the fireplace area, and then you step down to that eastern yard area, which is right there, to the breakfast area. And then uh, that's it for the upper ele south elevation. The um, east elevation is the lower drawing on the right-hand side. It's just to give the extension of the terrace there. To the south, to the north, and uh, animation of the windows reflecting the eastern sun to the living room, dining room, and the bedroom up above, the bathroom up above. And uh, the next one, any questions? Anybody awake? South, uh, north elevation on the upper level there, uh, showing the uh, children's rooms on the right hand side, and in the middle is the master bedroom, bathroom on the left hand side, which is just a single twist on the left, and proposed on the right with a little like uh, all faceted redwood uh, Alhambra type, I think they're called, uh, rooms are around the bathtub area. In the middle, we're accentuating the Extending the balconies on the back side, uh, great mountain views if you're looking up at the mountains down there. No infringement into the neighbor's privacy if there's a uh, separation line between the rooms. And larger windows in the middle of the bedroom areas to uh, accentuate the openness to the north. And then below in the middle, you will see uh, more glass. Right now, it's all sliding glass doors, 1950s aluminum, shaded or painted, obviously. Style doors and windows that open all the way through to the front door that you saw on the north elevation. So that becomes an entry vestibule, if you will, on the ground floor. On the west elevation on the lower side, you'll see an enhancement to the upper windows on the top floor, the uh, middle room, the library with the little French balcony, and then the entry room and the, and the terrace on the lower level. Stone veneer shaping up some of the uh, portions of the area, some of the little round windows, and a little tilted veneer on the roof pitch to expand on the kids' bedroom there on the top floor. The lower floor already comes out that way to the north in the kitchen area. We're just taking out an interior wall where the laundry room is now, and we're making the uh, kitchen larger with a breakfast area on that same patio outside of that breakfast patio on the left hand Uh, that next drawing, please. Just sections through the buildings. Uh, top one there, you can see. I, the top I don't think we need to see this. Level effect from front to back. Uh, Just keep going. The right one on the upper right. Excuse me. The upper. Scroll Richard, up. I don't know that we need to look at this. We're, we're scroll up again. We're primarily interested in the exterior of the building. Okay. Okay. Then, okay. Then these. Uh, Enlargement of the uh, wall plant here at the uh, front door at the uh, street level, the gates and the wall. And then you scroll down, you can see the elevation of the wall. They're six feet high. Um, and I just did some scallop on that long front face there to give it some uh, relief of tension and perhaps a tone or two lighter or darker, probably darker underneath the scallop relative to the other ends. Using stone, honed stone, sandstone veneer at the entry columns, but not at the exit columns. Wrought iron framing with uh, fixed redwood panels in between the wrought iron, which you see in the rendering in the bottom elevation. The uh, idea of the wood gate to come across the street to that uh, Casa de Herrero, they have a collection of wood, wood, solid wood gate without any adornment lines at all. But this is, I think that's their. Is that it? Landscaping. We have landscaping on board here. We're supposed to have zooming landscaping. Membership. Who is it? Josephine Grubb. Haley from. Uh, Haley. Haley from her board. Uh, my, 
Yes, Paul. Paul. Smart. Yeah. Haley, are you with us? And John. Yes, I am. Go ahead. You're on. Sorry. I apologize. This is Kimberly. Did you ask if Kimberly was with you? Oh, Kaylee from Arcadia. Oh. <laughs> Kaylee, the landscape architect from Arcadia. You see her? Or Justin, maybe? I'm not sure that she's here. Um, I know she was in attendance earlier, and I see she's got her hand raised as an attendee. This is John, the um, project manager representing the owner. Go ahead, John. Yeah, they just like okay. She's in the attendees there. If you can, uh, she is she is present, so she just needs to be called in. Are you with us now, please? I am. Okay. <laughs> I don't think everyone saw my hand was raised. Sorry, I'm Kaylee with Arcadia Studio. I apologize for not being able to get in. Um. So just to go quickly through the landscape plan, Richard went through um, quite a bit of the site planning, but um, it ha this pro property has a relatively undeveloped um, site plan, um, it, but it has decent screening. So we're really building out the um, interior of the property. We want to um, formalize the motor court area, right? It, starting with the in front, of, uh, in front of the front doors, if we want to just zoom into kind of the front half of the property. So I can just point out a few features. So we're gonna give um, a little uh, fr uh, stone frame and cobble to kind of formalize um, kind of a parking court so that it doesn't feel like such a um, middle mid-century, just U-shaped driveway. We wanna give it a little prominence in the center there. Um, and then really um, show off the pool as like the water feature of, the, um, of that motor court area with some planting in between and some um, naturalistic stepping stones surrounding it just um, to nestle it into the garden. Um, if we can scroll a little bit down to show, yeah, the street, the layering at the streetscape. So we'll have, um, this client really loves jacaranda trees. So we're looking at um, a layer of jacaranda trees along the um, street frontage and then um, to provide the layers interior to the property, some citrus trees stepping down from um, from the jackrand trees, then the site wall and the citrus trees, and a little bit of patio space um, by the pool, uh, stone paving. And then um, the existing driveway is um, essentially the same configuration as uh, we'll keep. We're just um, repairing as needed. And Richard already showed the gates so we can go to the rear yard. And while we're scrolling up, I'll just mention we have really minimal um, global night sky friendly landscape lighting just to have safe navigation around the site, nothing um, nothing extravagant. And in the backyard, we're proposing a new um, kind of site wall, uh, stucco with a cap um, site wall in the back to kind of respond to the architecture um, that you can see there's this, uh, what looks like a circle. That'll be the stone patio that Richard mentioned, but as we look out, kind of projecting that curve into the backyard, um, this client really loves fountains. So putting a fountain on axis there um, and a little ribbon of lawn. They do have, um, he does have a child that needs some play space. So just putting it where it's functional for this property um, and not, really nothing extra. Um, and then we use it also as the path to come around to the side yard that has um, a pretty significant little terrace space that otherwise would be kind of hidden. So we want to, you know, work, rework their circulation to make sure that space is used. Um, and then there's a few little, um, again, this kind of just uh, loves like, kind of secret garden spaces. And so creating a little uh, kind of contemplation circle in this corner uh, with some bay laurel hedging um, and, and little secondary garden spaces around. You can see the plant palette on the left. We are proposing um, new screening material along the east side um, and the north side, but the west side is pretty well screened right now. Um, and so we don't need to add an additional layer there. Um, and then just for 
completion of the set, we've included um, our hydrozone and irrigation plants, but they're not very interesting for design review. So. Oh, are you done now, Kaylee? Yes. And Richard, are you done? Yes, I am. And I, could you go over the FAR for us, please? Oh, John. Yeah, I think I think I can kind of uh, help with that. We enlisted. Uh, um, I'm hi. My name's John. I'm not sure if I, my video is working right now, but I'm here it to is. represent. Okay. okay, I'm here to represent uh, my uh, my client, and um, we enlisted the help of Brian Banks on this project, um, just kind of as a rule of thumb and my recommendation. Uh, I like to bring them out uh, to make sure that we're covering bases uh, and not hit with too many surprises in terms of a project. Um, but uh, so let me just get you up to the page where the FAR, are you on that already? We are. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, so this house exists already over um, FAR, uh, but not, not by too much. And so we enlisted uh, Brian Banks to perform an FAR neighborhood study that um, found many uh, related properties in the same area that are existing already over FAR. And um, our current proposal puts us over, I, I don't, Richard, I don't have the percentage in front of me. 154. Um, 154. Yeah. Right. And the, the, and I think that's our proposed. So um, again, the study, uh, uh, if you look at the vicinity map, uh, he highlights which properties are in the neighborhood. Go down one more page there. Right there. Yep. Like right here, there's a, a, a table where we, we start some percentages for you to look at. Um, uh, scroll up a tiny bit uh, just above that, that graph. Zoom out a little bit, David. Oh, you yeah. get both the picture. So there's the site, and then there's some there's some neighboring um, properties here with that we've uh, we've highlighted around the property, uh, the study property. Um, one of them's over sixteen percent to the north, and then to the west, there's one that's forty four percent, and then across East Valley next to Casa de la Rero, plus forty six percent. And I, I, you know, I I think we're really emphasizing functionality in this house without detracting or taking away from the original charm that this house is. And it is, uh, you know, it's an old house. As Richard stated, it's over 100 years old. I think the residence was originally constructed post a fire um, in the 1920s and uh, has not really been changed, save some smaller remodels only to a section of the house in 2010. And our client really just wants to emphasize the beauty and architecture that is typical for Montecito without changing much of the structure. But there are some things existing in the house that just beg to have some addition and some changes, especially up in the master bathroom, um, master bedroom area and the living space. I think Richard's done a really nice job of balancing those to the uh, the west side. If you look at the north, or I'm sorry, the south elevation, but the uh, look at the west side of the property versus the the east side of the property and balancing those spaces with additions and emphasizing um, the views that this property really does have. David, can you zoom in on the table, the lower right hand corner of the table? Hmm. So Jonathan, just before we get into everything else, so there's that number at the bottom that says 121.85. And then there's the number next to it says 274.33. Do you see those? Can you see those, yeah, please? I do see those, yeah. So basically what happens when you add 121.83 and subtract, because these are the ones that are under 274.33, doesn't mm -hmm. this actually show that the neighborhood is less than 1.0 on the FAR? Isn't that what that table is showing, please? Um, I am not sure, actually. Um, I, I'm not sure if you're asking me to uh, answer a question that you already have the answer to, or if you're trying to ask well, me Well, I'm asking you, isn't that what that table says? Um, I didn't make this table. Brian Banks did, and I'm not exactly sure what that number means. I think you're correct, but that looks like a total to me. The 274.33 is a total percent uh, percent under. So there is a difference there. 
Very good. Thank you. Okay. So are you guys, Richard, are you done? Well, I would just like to, uh, you know, the county's way of determining the FAR is one system. My system is what we did is we eliminated some rooms inside the house. Therefore, we took away square footage. Right. And the net add to the project is the 600. Right. I understand that. Thank you. I just wanted to make that clear. Not the 900. Not the 900. So, and these are all interior face of interior. Okay. Very good. Richard, are you done? Exactly. Are you done? I'm through. Haley, are you done, please? Yes, thank you. And Jonathan, are you done, please? Yes, I am. Thank you. Very good. Questions, Tip. Uh, do you have um, maybe would show on the site plan that would show the um, existing footprint and the proposed footprint? Like the uh, where did you add? Well, we had one at one time, so let's see if we have still have it. Let's go ahead and scroll one more down. Uh, once again. Mm -hmm, there you go. Basically, the floor plan, the, the lower right-hand floor plan. You see the little addition? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so the blue... See the blue dotted line is the existing footprint on the north. So the word addition is that little horseshoe shape. What about on um, the, the, south west, side, the west side? On the right side, in the south side, which is the lower part of the drawing, you see the little dash dotted line jogging in there, and it says addition. That is our addition. What about on the other side? On uphill side? Yeah, on uh, the west. Over in the left? Left. Nothing. Yep. Well, see that upper left-hand corner right there? Yeah, where the cursor is? There's a one foot by seven foot enclosure there. And I see the existing, can you move to the left a little bit, David? The, the what? So how did you gain uh, almost 4,000 square feet? Say again? How do you gain almost 4,000 square feet? You're adding... Well, the existing house is over 3,000. Yeah, but you're adding 3,900 square feet. Oh, no, you're adding no, no. uh, 4,600 square feet. Only 600 square feet to the footprint and the second story, whatever, the, tip, the volume. The line is that they've got a big house. It's way over the... Right, right, right. They are, they're adding, according to Richard, and I'll take him at his word, it's 600 square feet. Oh, 600 square feet. I think that the agenda says 900. Is that right? No, it said something else. It said an, an addition of approximately 4631. He says 600 square feet. At least he's wrong. Probably. That's what I'm trying to get at. Well, by virtue of the fact we have eliminated rooms inside, we've reduced square footage. So when we add the square footage on the outside, it is... With that re reduction, only 600 square foot added to the volume of the existing house. So, um, existing, you have 3,958. Say again. Existing, the 3,958. David, can you go to the FAR worksheet? Let's go up to the that. Yes, that's right right correct. There. Okay, can we zoom in a little bit? Okay, so the columns existing to be removed, 236, new addition, 900. So there's a net change in there of about 650, right? Because there's 300 square feet taken out of that. Right, right. Inside. A net gain of about 650 square feet, right? If you scroll to the right, you'll, there, you'll see some more numbers. Oh, down, down, down. I'm sorry. Keep going. Going, 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 going. Oh, okay, go up. <laughs> there you go. Those are my numbers. Okay, so... Um, See, 398, 3958 at the upper left-hand in the middle there. So now it's 4691. It existing floor area. 
And then you go down below and you say existing additions deleted, you end up with 4, 6, 50, 31, which is the from almost 4,000 up on the upper left hand corner to 4,600 on the lower left hand corner. That's a 600 square foot addition. So the existing house is already over the FAR by 1.3? The original house. Yeah. yeah. That's the handicap here. And uh, so everything you do now is, is under the building, the footprint of the existing house, except the back, except the north. Except the north. Kids' bedroom. Okay, thank you. Is that all? Uh, Rob, please, questions. Yes. Um, Richard, um, so I looked at this um, historical report. So is my understanding of the uh, conclusion of that, that this is not a, a significantly historic structure and, and um, site? Did I, did I read that right? And this That's report? what I read also. Um, did, so would that, I've all, I, you know, it's always a tough um, solution to put a pool in the front yard and then kind of lack kind of the sense of arrival and, and you know, and what's the front yard, what's the backyard. Did, did you consider um, uh, getting rid of one of the gates and driveways and trying to maybe relook at where you can kind of create a sense of arrival, a new front door, and then maybe separate that and create kind of a, a pool area that takes advantage of the view? Um, the, um, keeping the driveway is a matter of probably the owner seeing the existing situation flow as easy as it does when people drive in, instead of going back to the northwest corner to the garage, they pull into the front of the front house and it's wide enough there to actually park two abreast if you wanted to, or park one and still get by. And the concept of the pool next to that arrival area was as a reflecting element of water theme more than a swimming pool activity area. So that's, so, I mean, so that's why there's no kind of pool terrace per se. Yeah. And then, right. and then is the pool, um, does, does the pool step down? What is the grade change between the, there's only like maybe three feet from the upper side of the driveway to where the steps are to the house, to the downhill side of the, uh, reception basin of the uh, infinity edge there. Uh, is probably four at the most. So will the jacarandas that are being proposed block your views to the ocean then? Say again, I'm sorry. Will the, will the, will the jacarandas that are being proposed, um, will they block the views to the ocean? If the, I thought maybe the house was sitting way oh, I'm sure we're going to plant that. dwarf jacarandas. <laughs> They'll be multi-trunked, and the client specifically requested them there. So in the field, we'll place them to frame the views that he, as, that he wants to preserve. But um, yeah, they, we'll we'll choose multi-trunks so they're not getting reaching for the sky. So I mean, I just I mean, what I mean, what's the it just seems like the grade change, the actual mathematics make it that even a small jacaranda that's really horizontal that you might might lose your view, but that's... Most most of the views are on the second story, correct, Richard? Okay, okay. Well, that yeah. makes sense. I understand what you're All saying, right. Rob, and uh, they are kind of lacy, and if they're... Sure, they're I love the trees. And lacy, but to yeah. that point, um, we're open to okay. options on that. All right, those are my questions. Thank you. Robert, questions, please. Can I see the gate street elevation? Scroll down to the last page. And what's the existing and what's the new? The top is the existing. Uh, I'm sorry, this is all brand new construction. It's all brand new. What What does it look like now? I'm trying to remember. I just. It's just a, I'm trying to remember. It's just a stucco plain wall with a uh, Eugenia hedge in front of it. Uh, I'm not sure that there's actually a wall there. It's just planted hedging with two driveways. You can see in the photo that uh, the site photo that Richard has in the in the first page of the plans, um, it's just planted um, hedges, and then it's oh, just yes. asphalt see, driveway see on the, open stop, to east. Stop on the site plan. Scroll up to the existing site. There it is. There is no wall shown. No, so there is no wall there. It's just all vegetation. 
and, and it, the existing uh, south or uh, south is to the right, correct? Yes. Is it's actually a three-story home? Portion of it is three-story. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't understand the question. Robert. It, it looks like it's three stories on your new elevation. Is it existing three stories? Yes, it is. Yes. Go, to, go to the elevation page. Scroll down about four pages. I'll back up. Yeah. One more. Thank you. There it is. Three stories on the left-hand side of the south elevation at the top of the page on the left. Okay. See where there's no windows up there? Yeah, That's I see that. It's a five that. and a half foot plane. Yep. But there's actually a room inside of there, but no windows. But it does have windows on the uh, western side, as you see uh, to the left. Oh, we don't have it on this page. I'm sorry. Okay. Scroll down or up. Scroll down. See, there are the windows there. There's two uh, okay. heave, heave hugging windows. Yeah. No more questions. No, please, questions. Yeah. Uh, are you re repaving the driveway? Too? Is that going to be a whole new material? or The entry driveway will be all, all permeable material, yes. And all the way back to the garage, too? That's, whether we have to do that or not is up in the air yet for calculations. I don't know about the wee lows and low lows and high lows and low lows. The only reason I ask is because... Uh, uh, and I know uh, she mentioned that the uh, planting on the, uh, let's see, west side is good and thick on the neighbors, but there's like no buffer there. Have yeah. you thought about trying to add a little planter or something on that west side there a little bit? Do you have room to do that? We don't currently have room if the driveway is to remain as is. Um, we don't, we're here for concept, so it hasn't been floated by the um, civil engineer yet, but we're hoping to be able to leave that section of the driveway as is and just repave the front section. I'll to answer your question, uh, Bill. Um, the driveway, because the house is away from the Western property line widens there, yes, part of that driveway can be removed at that point and provide planting to uh, cover the house my design and um, low plants had you thought uh, rob was kind of alluding to was there a thought about having the pool in the backyard on the north side of the property uh john you might address that with the owner's uh, request for the pool in the front yard yeah or, i can uh, i can do that that's that's fine richard um when we first walked this property and talked about the pool um I believe Kaylee and Richard were both on site with me. We we actually did ask if he would consider putting the pool in the back. And just as a matter of thumb, he much prefers it in the front. And his reasoning for that is that it gets more sun. Um, so he thinks during the summer that there's more sun that comes through uh, and 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 really gets the the light there on the on the pool specifically in the front of the house. And he prefers it in the front. And, uh, I think also to make it part of a uh, water feature entry slash uh, arrival thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the question I have too is, would that pool have a pool cover? And if it does have a pool cover, do you plan on keeping it covered? I mean, then it sort of takes away from your... I think, I mean, again, pond concept. I, I think we're kind of, uh, again, at a conceptual level here. Um, if we have to have a cover, we course could do that um i do not expect the client to really ever have it covered unless he uh has to uh you know but uh, again there's an element of it being a reflection pond so a pool would then detract from that element a pool cover would detract from that element um and uh i think that answers your question let me know if it doesn't and then last question richard um your railings are, that you have on your balconies, are they going to be open rails? Is it solid? It's oh, the uh, balcony rails? Yeah. This whole I was thinking of those as kind of uh, almost like five eighths, three quarter inch twisted wrought iron, solid with knuckles and baskets in them, that kind mm -hmm. of thing, with just a heavy metal 
shaped top on it, staying away from the two by two, two by six top rail thing. Okay. All right. That's all. Thank you. You're building some new roofs up there, right? Up on top, you're like adding a gable that's going the other direction, and yes, on the uh, on the uh, east south wing. side at least, east wing, north and south side, yes. And are you raising the plate anywhere? Or no, in fact, uh, the existing plate is kind of high in there; it's like nine feet on the upper level. The lower level is almost uh, ten or eleven in that living room. So you're not lifting the roof at all. No, I'm putting my new plates. I uh, had eight feet in the front where the living room, uh, master bedroom is, to that gable to the south. To the gable to the north, I'm putting them at seven and a half where the bathroom is because I don't need any height in there. Okay. So that feeds into the next question is, at the end of the day, isn't this basically almost a tear down and rebuild? You're redoing the entire envelope. I can't believe you're not going to change out all the plumbing, all the fixtures, you know, all of it, all the electricity, all the heating, you know. Isn't this basically a rebuild? All those uh, functional items that you mentioned as far as uh, the guts and manufacturing of the skin of the animal is will be redone, yes. The and all the finishes too, right? The structure will have to be added to. As we know, because in 1930, they didn't have plywood shear walls and that kind of thing. So we'll be upgrading the foundation system and the wall system to accommodate because of the uh, nature of the improvement. Okay. So if it's not a tear down rebuild, it's pretty close. Uh, John, he's a contractor. We can ask him. Okay. Very good. That's fine. Now, if I were to tell you that my understanding of the FAR calculation, which I did independently at, at my studio, actually indicates that the neighborhood that you showed, the whole neighborhood, is below 100 on the FAR, and you are now well above it already. Why should we have something that is so furtherly egregious, if I can put it that way, why should we permit that? Isn't there a way to get what you want without adding the square feet? Well, I actually looked at that, John, as far as the interior functions. Because of the change in levels, I can't really in, uh, improve on the uh, master bedroom suite without doing what we're doing here. So that's on to the second floor, though, rooms. right? Yes. Is that on the second floor or the first floor? Okay. You're, you just turned yourself off. Uh, a second floor, yeah, for the master bedroom uh, improvements, just for the uh, walk-through closet in the bathroom. And, a, you know, decent-sized uh, room. Okay, very good. For the main sleeping area. Public comment. Is there anybody that would like to address the board on item number four, 520 PARA, uh, excuse me, item number three, 1386 East Valley Road, please? Uh, no requests. Okay, we are on for concept today. Um, same order, tip, please. If you're off. Thank you. I'm not sure it's uh, fortunately, fortunately or unfortunately that um, the existing house is uh, not very attractive. It's more like an uh, ugly duckling, you know, when I look at... Um, the histo historical report. And um, it is huge. It's a two-story house that feel like a three-story house and a lot of blank walls and things like that. It's also, unfortunately or fortunately, that the county doesn't have any regulation on what constitutes renovation or new construction. You can keep one wall, you can call it renovation, even though, as uh, Chair Watson mentioned it, by the time you finish this project, it pretty much everything is new, the way I see it. You know, as you really can't save anything. Anyway, so it is what it is, and um, um, you obviously got more square footage by trying to make it more effective uh, use, and you also add a little more to the front to the back. 
Um, David, can you go to the um, elevation again? The um, uh, the one facing East Valley Road. Yep, that one. Can you zoom in the top one? Yep. That's the front elevation, right? Oh no, I'm I'm talking about the front. Yeah, go to one sh one sheet up. Yep. Thank you. So, uh, you know, I, you know, overall, you know, I think um, definitely the uh, renovation is looking better than existing. However, I think that um, looking at this elevation here and compared to all the other elevations, and this is the one that facing East Valley Road, I can see that you literally have pretty much every style of doors and windows facing one elevation from arches to uh, flat arches to uh, little right, postmodern to the right and to um, maybe, um, what, I'm not sure what you call the lower floor. Um, so I would like to uh, see if you can uh, find a way to uh, restudy the openings on this elevation, make it more in line with uh, the outer elevations. When you look at the back elevation, the side elevation, they're a little more Quieter, they, have, they seem to go with the, with the design of the house a little better. And um, so that's one thing I'd like to uh, to make a comment. In regard to the FAR, definitely it's, it's higher than what we uh, normally would approve. <clears throat> However, this is, I think, it's kind of a um, unique project because of the mass bulk and scale of the existing building. It's not like this is... Uh, 10 times worse or three times worse, or I think it's better if you rework this elevation. elevation. So because of that, I, I'm i inclined to be able to uh, uh, support the uh, increase in the FAR from 1.3 to 1.54. And I like to pull in the front because I think that with your new design, it kind of uh, provides some symmetry to the building and um, I think the front is definitely a place for the pool, not the back. Thank you. Uh, Rob, please. Comments. Um, you know, for what you folks are proposing, um, generally, I, I mean, the elevations are nice. Um, I agree with Tip's comments on the windows. Um, I think in terms of, you know, the formality that you're trying to create, the, the landscape plan honors that, you know, nicely. Um, but I, but I do think, I, I, you know, I do think you're missing an opportunity here. And I think the notion of having a pool in the front yard is potentially kind of a real estate fatal flaw down the road. That there's a something that just doesn't doesn't work. And then when you actually have to get into like a pool fence and um, some of those aspects of the code issues, that you might run into some other issues with making that all come together. Um, so I, I think it's, you know, I guess that my suggestion is worth kind of trying a, a study of, of looking where you could actually create a nice sense of arrival, a nice, really nice arrival to a house and then have the pool on that front part of that property, but then is separated in a way that it feels like the backyard. So, um, I think that's worth studying, but I mean, if this, if this is the direction you want, then I think everything you're doing makes sense, um, as far as that goes, um, the, the, the pool would probably be better served as being more feeling like a lap pool or something smaller than actually being a pool for that to kind of all work together. Um, I do, um, I do have a little bit, um, the gates I think caught my eye. Can we look at the gates for a second, please? Yeah, I, I, I guess I, um, yeah, the ones on the left are a little ornate and maybe the ones, I, I think there's maybe a little bit too much dressing on those, but, um, um, it, you know, it feels like it wants to be sym symmetrical and yet it, um, so it's not. So I guess maybe if you're going to go that direction, then maybe make the right side a lot quieter and kind of hide that entry and then really kind of, um, enhance the, the left side on it. But, um. Um, over, over, overall, I guess, um, I, I struggle with the pool in the front. I think there's a way to make it work. Um, I'm not convinced it works now, but 
uh, where you're going with it. I mean, what's there, the landscape plan, what you've done, Richard, are nice and on, on their own. But um, so anyways, those are my comments. Thank you. Robert, comments, please. Um, this is a very important site being right across the street from Casa del Herrero. So uh, my biggest concerns are this elevation we're looking at right here and those gates and that south elevation, which I agree is uh, somewhat busy, if for lack of a better term. Um, but I don't know if you'd see it or not. I almost, I've, I've got to drive by. I I have a million times, but I've, I know there's a house back there, but it's never stood out. And this is going to possibly, um, you know, we just want to make sure we keep the character and charm. Uh, and so a little more study on the gates and this elevation maybe would be what I would recommend. Those are my comments. Bill, comments, please. Uh, could you zoom out just a little bit, David? Uh, I agree with the other board members' uh, comments. Um, in regards to the pool, I you know I kind of agree with Rob. I I like the idea of actually, you know, maybe you don't have a through drive as an option. I, I it, the pool feels awkward there. If, if it was more reflecting, maybe it's more narrow and long, and it's a lap pool. But I don't think that's the owner's intention. It just feels like it might be kind of a strange location for that in terms of function and having to cross over where cars, cars are parked to get to your pool area and the option and the dealings with uh, pool fencing and screening and covers and and all of a sudden it takes away the, the component of it being a reflecting pool. Anyway, that being said, Maybe there's some other ways to render that or landscape it to make it feel a little more like it's removed from the parking area a bit. Um, the FAR, uh, a little troubling, you know, being that the average is under 100 and we're at 154. We were over that before. Um, the question is, does the new addition affect its massing visually? Well, the front facade looks pretty similar in terms of the massing of the building. So in that respect, I, I could probably be okay with it. Although the side elevations east and west are a little more impacting. So, I mean, if there was a way, Richard, to try and reduce that FAR, I don't know what you would do to do that. You'd have to re remove square footage to get there. Um, you know, maybe take an effort to try and see if that's even a possibility. I, I can support it being over 154 is kind of high. It makes it tough for us to keep it as a standard for everybody else that comes through. Um, so anyway, if there's a way to reduce that, great. Um, and then I think the idea is that uh, the other board members talk about that Front south elevation, I think I think there's some magic you can do there. It might be the way it's illustrated too, uh, so that we can see it a little better, shade and shadow and that kind of thing. So it reads um, uh, a little better than it is there. So anyway, those are my comments. Thanks. I have watched others for seven years, a little over seven years since I've been on this board and probably another five to seven years previously when I served on other boards. And you know it's amazing if somebody tells me that the standard is this, the setback is this, the height limit is this, whatever that standard is, people can make it work. And it's not that you can't make the building within the same square footage, it's that you don't want to. And I understand that. But I, I believe it's possible 
to design a very beautiful functional building. You, the question that I had about basically rebuilding, I don't see a lot of the existing building being left here. And so, I mean, there may be walls that are left up, but you bought, you were the one that brought up the foundation. I mean, when you start getting underneath the building and all of the shear connections, the uplift and the amount of concrete you need below that, I mean, this is an important rebuild and it would not surprise me for a second. It's just cheaper to tear this thing down and build it now that we've gotten it. So anything about changes in roof level, floor levels and things like that to me, while I understand them, I understand the comment, I'm not so sure given the amount of alteration that this building is going through that we should let, uh, it's the second time we've used it today, let that tail wag the dog. So I am, I'm not going to vote for this. I don't think that I see any Thing in the guidelines that say unless somebody doesn't want to do it i mean that's we're trying to keep the building sizes down and this building is already legally three stories so and you're taking advantage of that and I, and that's great but that three-story element rather than being a fairly quiet recessive building which is what robert was saying this is a fairly you know, active, not shy. There's nothing shy about the new building. Building, And so from my point of view, you are just creating a brand new house. So, and I think Tip's comment, you know, I don't see the full unification on the style yet. I would encourage you to work on that. But um, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to vote for that overage. I know there's a way to take out that 600 square feet. And then if you keep it level where it is, I'm more than happy to do to vote for it. But I won't vote for this based on that. I never have unless an FAR sub, uh, study substantiated that. And it appears to me that this one does exactly the opposite. In terms of this pool, just as a quick note, you know, there may be more sunshine there now. But as soon as Kaylee gets done putting in, are those, I'm not sure what those are. Are those olives down there? Jacarandas? Oh, really? So you're going to get all that leaf litter down there? So there's not going to be any light there. So maybe just put that into the equation. So anyway, any further comments before we go on? Okay, so I think back for concept, there's enough different things here. And it sounds like Bill is somewhat uncomfortable, but no one else is with the FAR besides me. You're okay with it? You're okay with it. Okay, very good. So um, thank you. Item number, did you want to say something, Richard? Okay. I mean, I are we coming back for what? For uh, preliminary on? Concept, I think. I think there's enough here. If. If we're in the neighborhood, I would love a site visit. If it works with any other projects we got going there. Well, they're, they're, they're kind of half an hour segments, so it doesn't really matter. Anybody else feel a need or a want for a site visit? No, I drive by that every day so I can see. Yeah, maybe may we just do it ourselves. We'll just do it ourselves. Okay, very good. Okay. My only comment would be that there are for the maps, there are five other dwellings that are over the FAR allowable for their individual site. But not this much. Uh, yeah, 46% from the last measure. You, you're now at 54. Uh, it's close enough. Okay, very good. So you're now the biggest house in the neighborhood from FAR. Okay, very good. Um, item number four. Will, uh, 520 Par Grande. And do we have someone visiting us over the internet for this project? Is Rob out there? Uh, is it Chuck. Chuck McClure? Is he out there? Yeah, right, 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 right. Is he, do you have him? Okay, very good. So 
We are back for preliminary final. The comments last time appreciate Spanish Santa Barbara style architecture. Look at reducing number of windows in the garage. Setbacks are acceptable for the lot size. Provide two or three site sections through the house from north south, such as though garage through the bedroom and through living room. Look at reducing Look at paving, consider changing driveway configuration, consider moving the vehicular gate further in to the west, provide screening and show relative to neighboring properties, make sure turn can be made in main parking area, turn around. No action taken, you're on for preliminary final today. There is a memo. The planner concerns are resolved. The applicant was required to retain the existing sandstone retaining wall and stairs at the front property line because the project historical report concludes the sandstone retaining walls and steps fronting Para Grande Lane contribute to the streetscape and therefore are eligible for listing as a County of Santa Barbara place of historic merit. The report also concluded that the other existing structures and landscape on this property are not potential historic resources and were not eligible for, list, for listing. Revised grading estimate is 120 cubic yards of cut and 60 cubic yards of fill. Will, nice to see you, Chuck. Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Oh, good. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, you're not no longer chained to your office. <laughs> okay, great. And can you hear me? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, terrific. Okay, Will Gray and uh, architect for the project. And let's see, we were here last December for a conceptual review and received constructive comments from the board. Um, today we're here for preliminary and final review. Um, the, the project basically has stayed the same since it was reviewed uh, in December for conceptual, except for with one important revision. Um, if we can jump to the site plan, A1.1. Uh, we, it's right after the, the, the civil drawings. So A, A1.1 is the proposed site plan, keep, keep going down. Um, what, we're, what we have done, one significant change to the design, we pulled the building. It, it was previously on the north and south side encroaching into the side yard setbacks. And, um, and so uh, per, uh, we, we decided with the owner to pull the building back out of the, the side yard setbacks to not only re reduce the square footage, but um, also it reduced the FAR down to 96% from 97%. And more importantly, it pulled the building away from the neighbors uh, to the south and to the north. Um, I'd like to address the each comment um, from the board. I'll just go through each one quickly here. Um, if we can go to sheet A3.2, the elevation, um, we have added uh, the materials, uh, the uh, color and materials to the elevations. We've also bumped up the design to a uh, quarter inch uh, and added you know, detailing and keys and things like that. Uh, the, the material colors aren't, we weren't, uh, they, they weren't exactly representative, I feel, of the actual color. So we have a board, if that is suitable to, to pass. Seem, it seems like the, the scan colors <clears throat> are very representative of the, or they're, they're not truly, they're, they're in the same direction of what we're proposing for the building, um, which is basically warm neutral tones throughout. Uh, the field color, which is, a, um, is uh, uh, called a cell from Chateau Domingue, it's a paint color and it has a reflect, reflective light value of 80.5%. Uh, item two, the uh, study the reducing windows in the garage. If we, 
the if we could go back up to uh, A3.1, that is the south, um, south elevation. The three windows of the garage are to the left. We, we studied this elevation and we felt that the window arrangement was, was pretty successful. So what we wanted to propose is reducing all the windows on that side of the building by six, six inches. Also in the garage, we're proposing to add seated uh, gl glazing as well as diffuse light or diffuse glazing. Uh, item three were the setbacks and I think they were acceptable. Item four uh, are, is a request for site sections, which is uh, sheet A 0 0.7. And we provided three sections through the, uh, through the site. The first uh, being through the garage, the second being through the uh, bathroom, the largest uh, section of the building, and uh, thirdly, uh, through the living room. Um, we worked with uh, Flowers and Associates uh, for our grading and drainage uh, design and plans, and um, we, we reduced our uh, cut and fill for the project by almost or, or less than or more than a half of what we we're initially proposing uh, for the cubic arts cut and fill. Um, the next item, uh, if we can jump to the site plan again, which is A1.1. We studied the driveway location and due to this historic uh, limestone wall, sandstone wall rather, um, uh, we felt, and also the size of the property, we felt the existing location of the driveway was in the right spot. Um, so we we were we proposed leaving um, the same entry to the site where it is. The uh, we worked with Scott Shell with ATE uh, to study vehicular um, circulation in and around the, the the site in the building. Um, and uh, he felt that, and we we concluded that the amount of driveway and paving, was acceptable and uh, what for the required turn, turning radiuses and exiting off the off the property. Uh, item six, uh, we we looked at the driveway location uh, or driveway gate location and we uh, pushed that uh, existing gate back. Even though it's a new gate, uh, we're replacing the gate with new. Uh, we pushed it back um, so it clears the right of way. Uh, also, the um, uh, it's approximately 20 feet off of the uh, the edge of paving from Paragrande. Um, Chuck has studied the the elevations uh, in some of his drawings, so we, I think I'll defer to him uh, for the detailing and the elevation design of this new gate. Um, one note or two notes while we're on the site plan, uh, we're working with uh, roads. We've been, we've had some dialogue with them about uh, this historic wall uh, and it, it being needed to be left in place. Also, any other improvement will be, we will be submitting um, a design exemption permit uh, for their review and approval. Um, so any um, improvement within the right of way is basically a, or will be at their discretion. Also, when we're on this sheet, uh, the exterior lighting fixtures, uh, there we had an updated uh, site plan, A1.1, showing uh, the, the beam spread for each one of the, the fixtures, but um, we I don't think that that drawing made it into the set for today. Um, the exterior light fixtures uh, will be uh, purchased by a company authentic Provence, but we intended to modify them um, and they were still, at, I think the cut sheets were on that site plan. Um, we were intending to modify them after market to make sure they comply with the uh, dark sky compliance and basically um, making sure that the hoods uh, above are extended. We, we will modify them so the hoods are added to as well as the glazing is um, diffuse and um, uh, opaque. Item six was a request um, to look at screening for the neighbors. And if we could go back to the site sections at A0.7. And to the north uh, neighbor, 
If you can zoom in perhaps on the, the that first image, yeah, the first site section. It, to the north, there's an existing two foot sandstone um, uh, wall with a six foot uh, existing wood um, fence. And it also has a 16 foot hedge on the on the other side of that 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 existing wood fence. So we felt that the screening on that side of the the building and design was sufficient. On the on the south side, we not only and as mentioned previously, we brought the building in to the setbacks and away from the property line, reduced all the windows by six inches, and, and you know added glazing or uh, diffuse seated glazing to the garage windows, but we're also proposing to uh, add morning glory to the top of the existing south uh, wood fence to give it an additional one to two foot um, canopy for screening. And uh, Chuck has a de Chuck looked at that in detail and I'll um, defer to him for that as well. Um, Lastly, was to look at the site um, and make sure that the parking and the circulation in and around getting in and out of the property was sufficient. Again, we had Scott Shell with ATE study that, um, and we have a sheet in the set A0.3, I believe. And he concluded after his study that, um, that our proposed two car, uh, covered two car garage and the one uncovered parking spot was um, sufficient and didn't, uh, it was adequate and did not need modification. So those are my points. Um, Chuck, I'll-, I'll uh... Okay, I'd like to take uh, BAR through the landscape plans and starting with L1. Can you see our screen, Chuck? Yes. Okay, very good, thank you. So this is that's L1. L1. Yeah, just well, just one for now. Like I'd like to go through them all. That that the this it's a small drawing under a A6 that cannot be in blown up. Okay, I'll, I'm just going to start. Um, everything in red is, is, has been our discussion with the roads department, and the and the work that that's going to occur in the in the uh, right away is the, a new cobble uh, stone cobble driveway on concrete, and that look will take us to the uh, vehicular gates, and it'll run under the gate itself, so it will there will be no appearance of the gravel um, that the chip seal gravel. Um, fire approved um, beyond the gate. So that'll be a nice clean look of real stone cobble up to the gates that I'll show you in a second. Um, the, the, um, the historic stone wall it remains. However, there's a, there's a block or two that has pivoted and that'll be adjusted. So we'll get a much cleaner, um, you know, orderly look on the historic wall. And the only, the only other um, two items that are going to be um, visible to the public is a new mailbox that I'll show you in a moment and a new pedestrian gate um, at the top of the existing stone steps on um, part of the historic wall. And um, Rhodes insisted that we take the Bougainvillea down, which meshes with my and the client's taste, but um, kind of um, grates on John Watson's point of um, about the Bougainvillea, but there, so that, there we sort of have it and that will be replaced with ficus rep. And so we'll get a, the appearance of of a, of a nice dark green hedge at the top of, um, at the, on the existing fence. And note, also note that you'll see on the planting plan in a moment that um, Rhodes is insisting that that planter between the, the stone wall and the existing fence um, be about one foot high. So we, we can't do any trees and we just have to stay low with some salvias and some rosemary. And then um, everything beyond that is just 
landscape related. There's a new walkway um, from the from the pedestrian gate towards the street to the front door. Um, there's just it's very we have very tight side north and south sides, so we just have some access, and then we just have a rear yard with some lawn and a new fountain. So then you can see the section to the lower left. That's from the street to the gate, and we just have about two feet of rise and 20 feet or about, I think it's 11%. And so then we could go to the L1.1 is our fire department study. We have the fire department's um, approval based on this drawing that they're, they're happy with the access. And then we could go to L2. And this is our, our pedestrian gate detail. And this is not, this is more of a working drawing. Um, so we won't see all we're gonna, the, the heavy perimeter is not um, something we're going to see. It's going to be a metal frame gate with cedar planks and um, and some and some dark black, you know, clavos um, attachments. So that's a little visually not fair to to what the public and will see. But um, that's our our um, our pedestrian gate replace. Then the south property line. We just wanted to show. Um, we've been working with the neighbor. And we've worked this out to where the existing ficus repens on the fence will remain, but we're also going to turn loose some um, ipomeria. And then there's a few sandstone curb details in different conditions. One has a co how, do, how does the sandstone cobble work with the, the sandstone cobble work with the adjacent curb? How does it work with chip seal driveway? And so there's a few different conditions there. Then we can go on to L3. And that's the vehicular gate. So the, so in the, and that drawing to the lower right is is the finished look. And um, so we have a, a masonry a plaster pilaster and Will has the color of the plaster and a traditional, you know, plaster, classic plaster um, um, pilaster. And then we have a wood, a rougher wood gate um, in cedar. And then there's construction details for how it's built and it's very fine tuned dimensions on the lower left. And then you can see our matching mailbox, which will be out in the ro road right away. And Rhodes is, is okay with that. They've approved that. So we can go to L4. And now we just have some standard details. We can move right on to five. And this is the planting. And if, it's hard to see, but really the, what, what What's interesting, or um, I guess notable, is just the low plantings in the in the planter between the stone wall and the fence. It's just it's we've got some salvia and some rosemary. They're not heavily contrasting, um, so we're just got some sort of low low contrast plantings, and then we'll have the ficus repens on the fence. So it's a pretty um, subdued experience. And then we've just got some you know there's really not very much planting. We've got a tremendous um, northern hedge on the neighbor's property line and we have very little to almost no planting opportunity though we do have a wood fence with ficus repens on it there's going to be a lawn in the backyard and then we can go to six and this is irrigation that's not really interesting to a aesthetic board so we can move on to seven and this is our lighting and if you could zoom in on that i just wanted to, to show that all we have is a walkway light and it's bra uh, bra uh, but copper that'll weather out. And we're just simply wanting to get somebody to the front door safely and stop. And then north of the driveway, we just have one walkway light near the Knox box to just help a driver get in. And we just wanted to stop right there. Um, then we could move on. Oh, and then we just go into Huilo, and our Huilo checks out. That's to keep going. Um, Huilo calculations, Montecito Water likes it. Um, and then, then that's our soils test. So that's all I have. Will, are you done? Are you done? I am, yes, yes. yes. Questions, Robert? Uh, can I see the chimney cap details again? Right there. Right there. There you go. So. Are you on? Okay. 
Yeah, your cap is way down inside. Is there air coming in through those sides for the, you know, ICBO to let that thing breathe and exactly yeah right there there are openings uh on all four sides and also at the top okay so water can get out as well as air can get in that's right there there'll be a a, a collar um uh, around the the the, the arrestor and and it'll be waterproof accordingly and you're not worried about like birds or something nesting in there well we might be able to add a uh, mesh okay i just i looked at it and i was like hmm how is that going to work so but you answered my question thank you bob question for the front. um what on the front steps are the front steps existing or yes is new sandstone um, but the gate the gate is new the gate's existing and we're going to replace it. It's not okay. healthy. <laughs> is there is there any issue tuck with the landing outside the gate on the with that distance to the from the gate to the first step? No, we um that's the existing condition and and instead of, you know, modifying to to get you up that we'd prefer to have it the way it's shown. Okay. We did discuss it in terms of the uh the landing code or something. Um that's, that's all I have. Bill, question for you. Yeah, uh, I was looking for, because you're here for final, I was looking for some additional details that maybe I missed. Uh, the pilasters for the, the columns that you have and the trellis, did you detail any of that? Uh, we we don't have, uh, we, we have them in elevation a quarter inch. And uh, they're, the, we don't have them at a larger scale. And and what are those columns? Are they? I saw one that said wood. They're wood. Wood, and no, they're going to be wood. stained then or painted. If we can go to the elevations, um, so the trellis specifically, I guess. that's perfect, right? And uh, I believe the That'll number be... of the trellis is that I, one where the arrow hard, is hard hard to read, but um, right, it's uh, it'll be uh, dug fur stained dug fur with a um a minwax finish with an oak and uh, I believe uh, a mahogany finish. And does the same thing occur on the house? Because you have columns there as well. Are those the same material? Are those going to be plaster or stone? Those will, in the arcade, if we could go up uh, one sheet, th those columns are plaster. Plaster. But no details that you have for that. That's correct. And then on the, um, the gates themselves, the outside you have a detail what, what's that detail going to be made out of is that a plaster that's going to be struck or exactly the it'll match the the it'll match the uh, the building and uh, it's an integral plaster with to uh with the this uh tan color so and uh cap detail will be a plaster finish then plaster that that's correct the the act the the, the gate itself will be wood stained stained wood Doug Fur. All right, that's all. Thank you. Uh, a tip. Uh, no, no questions. No questions. Uh, and I have several questions. So, have you considered custom making those light fixtures if you're going to be doing as much modification as you represented? Right. It, well, I think what we wanted to do is give a, a a baseline of that. That was the design intent, and we're going to modify them to to meet the dark sky. But um, I think we could probably buy one and and go to Handelman and have them make them. Or that I know of, that can modify, there are at least two that can modify before that can make. So anyway. Um, to the best of my knowledge, we have never approved a path light in the right of way. Would that? Would you have any problem with eliminating that from the project? Absolutely. Eliminating no. it? No, eliminating it. 
Yeah, yeah Ro Rhodes said it was okay if we put it 30, in 30 inches deep in conduit, but um, we, we, would, we would be happy to walk away from it. The building code says that you need one foot candle of light at exterior doors. Right. They don't tell us how to get that. <laughs> and it seems to me that the, I think it's four or even six light fixtures that you have on that rear elevation. I know as a fact that's going to produce, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 foot candles down there. Have you considered putting some kind of lights up in the trellis that would come down and provide you a softer light, a more beautiful light, at least in my opinion, and also meet the code requirements? And perhaps uh, uh, blend the two? Perhaps oh, maybe have you know eliminating one. them because I don't my sense of those light fixtures. Okay, so there's a number of different things that we concern ourselves with with lighting, and one of them is a thing called glare. And glare is basically a, a hot spot. And if you've got any kind of a light fixture on a relatively small property, so you're very close to the property line. And it looks like you don't have particularly great edging, at least on the south. That if we if there's a way to get rid of that and substitute it with something that is never going to have glare, that would be a positive, I think. Therefore, the question is, would you consider that eliminating those lights in the back, Absolutely. costing you less money, providing you probably a more romantic feel? So. Absolutely. Right. I think we, we'd be open to that. Okay. Public comment. Is there anybody, we're on for preliminary today and, and final. Uh, is there anybody that would like to address the board for at item number four, five, two, zero, Para Grande Lane, please. No requests. Okay. So we, as I just said, we're on for a preliminary final. It sounds like we're missing at least one detail. I will also said that the gate design and all of that is up to Caltrans or roads department or somebody. So it seems to me that final may not be quite right, but preliminary, I think it's definitely. And let's see what the rest of the board says. Comments, Robert, please. I, I think it's a uh, nice project given the size of the lot. You did a good job. Um, the gate columns, if you're working on that with Caltrans, they seem a little bit overwrought to me for the style of the home. But, you know, that's subjective. Um, I think it should come back for... Final on consent. For the pickup few items. Yeah. Okay. Rob, please comments. Um, I, I agree with uh Robert's comments on the um the the gate that it might be too many clavos uh that could be simpler and bigger. Um but um I think it's a nice project overall and, and looks clean and simple. Um, I did make a comment the last time, and I, I accept it as is in the rear lawn. Uh, it might be nice to um, encapsulate those trees in kind of a shrub bed and have the lawn be, um, you're kind of floating out there. And so you have this nice formal rear yard with the fountain in there. And I think if you kind of encapsulated the trees in a shrub bed and then had the lawn um, kind of a formal shape, that I think it might be a little more successful. Um, but I don't, that's nothing. I'd support the project as it is. Bill, comments, please. Yeah, uh, I certainly grant it preliminary with final and on consent. I appreciate the effort you made to reduce the, it off the setbacks. And uh, thank you for trying to get as much landscaping buffer between you and the neighbors as possible. And, um, if you can come back and you know further detail the, those those columns showed in wood and the cap and how you're connecting it and uh, the, the trellis and uh, you know maybe one detail showing that column it's plaster and I, I'm 
I'm on the fence, but I could uh, hear what Robert's saying about the, the complexity of the tap of those columns at the gate. I'm okay with them, but if there was a way to simplify it, it might maybe tie a little more with uh, with the house. So anyway, those. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, comments, please. Uh, I have no further comment to add. Yeah, I think this is a very nice project. In particular, I think the finishes or the color scheme that you picked is going to really make this have a heart connection kind of project. There's a lot of times we'll see things that are white, and they've kind of, you know. But saying that, I know for whatever reason, there's three lights or four lights at the front door. It's Seems like you spent a lot of money. I know you've got that little L shape, or you, you get, and I think it's okay because I don't think any neighbor is ever going to see those lights. But it seems awfully bright, and um, I think that the backyard, if you can soften that lighting back there, get it off the house so that you're actually getting the light back where you want it. I think that that, that would be a nice project for you. And I regret to say that you have done probably as good a job as you can on a narrow lot, particularly on the south side with that um, fence rather than a hedge. I consider hedges to be the single quality that makes Montecito Montecito. Um, but given the fact that the setbacks don't permit that, um, you know, But I, from my sense, we need to get it finished up before we give it final. And I think that that's roads and whatever they come down on the gates or not gates, steps or not steps, whatever, you know, and then any of the details Dave brought out. You were concerned about the chimney pot. Right? And it looks to me like it's a little tight. Well, I haven't done a chimney cap like that for years. And the last time when I read the ICBO report, that's a no-no. Now, there may be other chimney cap details, but I, you might want to check to see what that ICBO report is. So is there a motion for preliminary with final one consent, please? Motion to grant preliminary approval to come back for final on consent details that we requested. Okay, is there a second? Okay. Is there any further discussion, please? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yeah, we have one item left, but- Thank you. Out. Thanks, Will. Thanks, uh, Chuck. Yeah, we've got one more.
Okay, we're back. Item number five, 1705 Glen Oaks Drive. Um, Ron, are you with us? Jennifer? I'm here. Uh, I'm here too. Hello. Oh, there's a memo. Uh, based on comments made during the such and such hearing, the applicant has added additional trees along the north and northwest side of the property and provided new rendering. Okay, um, so, and Ron, are you here? Uh, I'm here, I'm here, hello. Do you have the landscape architect here, please? Uh, yes, we do. And the name, please? Uh, Ryan Rush. Why? Ryan, okay. Yes. Very good, and Jennifer. Okay, so the floor is yours. You are on for preliminary, oh, let me make the comments. Increased landscape screening along East Valley, which you've done apparently. Increased number of trees along the northwest portion of the property. Add tree species with vertical height. Refine renderings, no action taken. So um, we're on for preliminary today. I made some comments about lighting as well. So Ron the, the, or Jennifer, whomever, floor is yours. Yeah, uh, I can I can get in. I, uh, if uh, we got the comments last night, we've addressed it. I'd like to quickly go over them. If you would, if we can go to page 24, please. Uh, so, I'm sorry, one back, 23 first. Uh, okay, so we removed most of the exterior lighting. We left the ones that, in our opinion, is necessary for safety. We left two lights on both sides, on each side of the entry door. And then we left three lights all, um, on the side of the garage doors. Also, we have three light fixtures by the rear patio to lit up the patio. Uh, if we can go to the next page, please. Yeah, here you see the patio lights again. All other lights are removed. Uh, if we can go to the next page, please. Here we see the lights by the garage doors, by the entry, and on the left side, uh, three light fixtures to lit up the deck. Uh, if we can go to uh, and uh, and here's the spec of the light light uh, light fixtures right here, it's down light, so minimize any spillage towards the neighbors. And next page, please. Uh, we used to have on the left side we used to have some lights under the E line of the upper floor. We removed those as well. And next page we. We did our best here to refine the material board a little more. Uh, we specified the metal soffits with the materials we proposing to use. We specified the actual roofing material and type and a model for standing sea metal roof. Uh, we had some more details on stucco color. It's Sherman Williams, uh, what type of the, the actual model of the color we're proposing. The stone is specified also. Um, light fixture again, the same wood cladding color. That's pretty much it on the material board. And then if we can go to skip one page, yeah, skip that one if you would, and go to renderings next one, then I can briefly go over the renderings. Um, Yes. Okay. So we've added landscaping to as much as we could with our the resources we had in this 3D. Um, so this is the view approaching the house by the driveway. And next is the inside, inside the property, just to see the light fixtures location. Uh, next one is showing it on a deck. All same light fixtures. Next one is the view uh, from uh, East Valley Road facing southeast. So you can see the house. Next one will be getting a little closer to the house. You'll see some of the 
roof. The next one, I guess, almost. Next slide would be almost like uh, by the house, being close. And, um, we can skip next one. It's the same like in the beginning. And this is now we're moving away, uh, heading towards the entrance uh, to the community. And here's a little further. And the re that's it. We can go back one. And we're showing eight to 10 foot high landscaping here. Uh, that's all I have on renderings. We can switch to landscape if you would like to, and then Ryan here can help us to answer any questions. This is a tree protection diagram of the existing protected trees. This exhibit shows it protected trees only. I think next page would be a good page too, to discuss the landscape. That's it. Ryan, are you there? Yes. Hmm? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Right. Okay, so <clears throat> what we did is we added in um, several uh, tipu trees along the uh, north property line, along East Valley Road, along with clusters of uh, uh, western sycamores, and um, also added in the six required mitigation trees, which are the coast live oaks, which are the uncolored tree symbols, which you'll find at the bottom of the uh, landscape schedule there at the bottom. It's kind of off the screen. But those, yeah, they're there at the bottom. And you'll see I have three of those on the westernmost portion along San Ysidro Creek. And then on the north northeastern portion along East Valley kind of just along the top of that uh, utility yard. <clears throat> Additionally, we also have the uh, field dug olive trees as the anchor points to the end of the pool deck where we have that long feed stable and also closest to the Ipe wood deck of the house at the rear. So all in all that with the existing protected trees, we have very, very heavily <clears throat> foliated canopy situation there to really screen the tree, uh, screen the home from the road, which was the concern of the board during the last meeting along East Valley Road. And that's pretty much it. Uh, Jennifer, Ron and Ryan, are you done please? Yes, I'm done. Yes, we are. Jennifer, okay. anything you want to add? No, that's next. So yeah. we are on for preliminary today. Questions, tip, please. Uh, I have no questions. No, please. Uh, no questions. Rob, please. Uh, Where are the uh, Tipuanas, please? Okay, so the Tipuana trees are the ones that are the circles, the perfect circles that have the square or that are basically divided into uh, quarters. There you go, right there. And then there's three over to the east, northeast. And, and you're, you're aware how huge those trees get down the road? Absolutely, yeah. So the idea is that we they can maintain the, the height, but the 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 opinion of the board previously was that we needed a lot of height there to really hide the mass of the house from East Valley Road. So I wanted something that was relatively fast growing and that was a good complement to the uh, sycamores, kind of create a lacy park-like effect. 
Okay, I have no more questions. Robert, please, questions? The uh, interior recessed light, uh, there seems to be a lot of them. Do you really need that many can lights? Inside the house? Uh, yeah. Probably we can we can reduce those. And we worry about that quote lantern effect John was talking about earlier, and I'm just curious, you know, what is the wattage? Are they dimmable? Are they on, you know, a smart system or something like that? Uh, no they will be, yeah, they will be dimmable. They will be on a smart system, absolutely, and. Uh, once we get closer, we're planning to hire a electrical consultant who will calculate the necessary amount of light to put in there. But um, the only place that I see a little too many of them, uh, maybe the dining room area that has a little too much, but that's facing East Valley Road. The other ones are like we have four for the closets. Uh, let me let me go to the lower level. Actually, the living area is not that many at all. We we can quickly switch to that. I'll, I'll just quickly walk through it if, if you will. That's page thirty. It's page twenty-five. Like living area, main sitting area to the left. By the deck that's a good amount i don't think that's too many kitchen we can reduce some dining room we can reduce definitely the main staircase that that has a window facing the community that we can reduce we don't need that many there i agree um the formal living to the right same here this has a lot of windows we will have less lights in here but again there will be dimmable I don't think it's too many, but I think we can reduce this a little bit. And garage, garage potentially too. Yeah. No we'll, more questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll go over it again. Okay, and then just uh, to follow up on that, in the living room area, there's a door that um, folds back on itself in the west. And you have a total of three lights out there. Do you have room up in the soffit outside to have some down lights there rather than those wall lights? Does that soffit provide enough space? I'm sorry, I don't know if it's my computer or not, but I think you break it up a little bit. No, we can't hear you, John. Okay, so. Oh, that much better. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm sorry. So. On the west of the living room, you have an accordion door, right? Or Back. stacking door. Thank you. Okay. And you have three wall-mounted lights there. Have you cons the question is, have you had considered down lights out there so that the the fixture is more hidden than what you have there, please? Have you considered uh, it? That's the question. Yes, and the fixture we're using is down light. It has that uh, decorative element, but the actual light source is hidden within that uh, rectangle, the, the gray box. So Very the good. below yeah, doesn't have any, any light source. It's, it, it's completely down. Public comment, is there anybody that would like to address the board on item number five, 1705 Glen Oaks Drive, please? No request. Okay, we are on for preliminary and preliminary only. Yep, comments. Uh, I definitely um, like the um, increased landscaping screening along East Valley Road. I think that helps. So... Um, other than that, I don't think any, any other comments. I think the project is ready for preliminary approval. Bill, comments, please. Yeah, I could. Uh, Rob? Um, 
I think you guys have done a really nice job at advancing this project from where you started off. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, there's some there's some details that I would comment on, like that that I think that the, the paving deep in the driveway, for instance, in the front walkway, would benefit from some soldier courses and things like that to kind of um, you know that are details you might expect on the uh, construction documents. And the only other concern I have is is um, the, the your trees, um, the use of them is a little bit like I think where you have the, the California sycamores. Um, I, I, I don't think they're going to, I think you have some trees in a way that there's going to be some competition that you're not going to find helpful down the road or productive. You're getting some trees that are getting going to be way too big and they're growing the oaks. And so I, I'd kind of look at that again, but um, I think you've got all the right pieces. And, I would just encourage you to maybe study the tree layout a little bit, but I would definitely um, approve this one. Robert, comments? Uh, only comment would be, you know, like you said, study the lighting, see if you really need that many based on the fixture you're picking. You know, is a you have a detail of the can light, I'm not sure yet, but you know, is it a four inch, a six inch? What is it? How does, you know, cause the LEDs are so bright now that I would think some of those areas could be reduced just to make sure from the public East Valley Road, we don't get a uh, glowing light bomb but if you're going to get a study on it, that's fantastic. I appreciate that and think, yeah, preliminary is fine. And Jennifer, I know that at least we were continued two times and maybe three times at the very beginning of the project. And so from the very first point that you started with the neighbors till now, obviously, this project has gone a long way. As a member of the community, I'd like to thank you for jeopardy that along. And I also believe that this is a nice project. And, you know, Rob, I think may have a point about sort of five years, seven, 10 years down the line, what's the landscape look at there? Yes, we want it covered up, but is there a way to achieve that um, so that it looks fabulous from this point on? So I would encourage you to take a look at that. And uh, I assume Rob and I will take a look at it final. So is there a motion, please, for preliminary? I'll grant a motion, make a motion to grant preliminary approval with the applicant to return for final on consent. Your second is any comments? Just uh, to study the lighting and to return with the details. Uh, you had details, but I think study trees and studying paving materials. Yeah. The detailing of it yeah. and the details too. Just so you're aware, the details that you have are fairly generic. So if you can be more specific with materials, uh, call outs on your details like the metal soffits and. He did Hard call rail. out. He called out the matte finish, so he got that on there. I'm talking about the soffits were metal underneath the roof eaves. Did it show that too? Uh, he, sh uh, I don't know. Well, anyway, you know what to do. Is there a second, please? Second. Further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed. Motion for adjournment, please. I'll move to adjourn April fourth to twenty twenty four. Second, anybody? I'll second that. Jeez, I am so happy someone seconded. <laughs> Thank all you. Those, yeah, we're going to stay here all night. <laughs> think about it. All those in favor? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh.